Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP episode number 312 recorded December 22nd 2018. I am your host Drawn Land aka Weird Wolf. Uh, along with me this uh, afternoon, this evening is pretty much the whole cast <laughs> of TFYLP. We're, we're short one or two people. I uh, hope hopefully they will join in very shortly. A uh, little, uh, little note, this is our biggest episode of the year our holiday episode. We've got our Secret Santa gift exchange we're going to be kicking things off with here. Uh, things are going to be moving rather quickly, hopefully, um, because later on in this episode, uh, we will have some very special surprises for, uh, for each and every one of you. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this episode. Uh, also, this is our final live broadcast of 2018. We will be... Uh, taking the next uh, couple weeks off and uh, be back on the first, hopefully the first Saturday uh, of 2019. Now, uh, I also want to point out our sponsors, uh, even though that I don't have them on the screen here. Uh, CapturePrey.com, great toys, great prices, great service. CapturePrey.com, and also Ripped Apparel. You can save 10% or more on your orders from Ripped Apparel with the promo code TFYLPPOD. Uh, we are live here uh, today. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, for being here with us today. And uh, uh, also say a big hello to Hang. He hasn't been able to join us in, in quite some time uh, from from beautiful Australia. But uh, what time did you say it was there? Uh, it's six. It's six oh nine. Six I'm dying inside. A.M. Six oh nine. It's tomorrow. Yeah, it is. that's Australia. right. It I'm is. from the future. <laughs> he he is future boy today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we do have our secret Santa uh, gift exchange here, um, so we're going to uh, do that first. Uh, this should go rather quickly. Uh, should take about an hour to do. Uh, everybody here we'll, we'll open up stuff and uh, maybe talk about what we got uh, and if we have time we'll share our favorite holiday memories in regards to transformers uh, i want to point out that we do have uh, our youtube comments and our facebook live comments going so if you're watching us on either or you can comment and they will pop up on the screen here and everybody can see uh, what you're saying and uh, uh, you can comment and and join in alive with us. Uh, so without further so, ado, oh, go ahead. So, Duran, do you kind of want to explain how we did the Secret Santa? Basically, it's just a, uh, a random draw. Uh, I gave our uh, sponsor, Orson, uh, Orson Christian from, uh, yes, Capture Prey right there, a, uh, a list of names, and he put them in on a randomizer, sent out everybody's name, and uh, we got that person a gift. And sent the, uh, sent it to them with a with the capture prey return mail address, so they don't know who sent them a gift. I don't know who got me this, you know. So uh, if if once we open it, I, or as we are opening it, I guess the person can reveal themselves to the person. Say for example, if if Peter got Rick, then uh, as Rick is getting ready to open, Peter can speak up and say, "Hey, that's for me," um, and. Uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. So uh, uh, everybody want to say hi real quick that uh, is here. Uh, I guess we'll start with uh, Christian. Hey, guys. Lucas. Hey. Anna. Eh, you're, you're muted. Uh, yeah, you were muted. <laughs> uh, no audio. Uh-oh. Nope. What happened? We'll come back to her. Yes. Sean? Hello, guys. Jim Black? Hello. Hello. Peter Chavez? Happy holidays forever, Destron. And as we mentioned, Hing Yip Chan? Uh, feel, my, feel my pain. Feel your pain. <laughs> and Rick Alvarez? All right, so let me go run down the list. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> Happy Ramadan. Happy Diwali. Uh, happy Kwanzaa, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Festivus, and for my agnostic friends, hello. 
What about Yule and Saturnalia? Sure. Yeah. You also missed Solstice. 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 So, uh, winter Solstice. I know. I'm sorry. If I missed you, please feel free to email me a terrible uh, comment. <laughs> uh, joining us shortly should be Paul Fremel. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know what's what. Uh, what has him held up? Maybe there's a scheduling confusion there. This is a very big episode, and there's a lot to try to get. Uh, get coordinated so I'm sure there's going to be some hiccups along the way <clears throat> hopefully it will be reduced uh, so uh, I want to sh uh, shout out to everybody there in the uh, uh, live chat uh, Carrie, uh, Antoine, Bedford uh, great to see everybody and hope you all enjoy the show uh, so without further ado let's kick things off with uh, the first one up here in the panel Peter you want to do your secret Santa gift exchange I've already got my sure. my my handy Leatherman ready for my. <laughs> you got my uh, my tool. Got a good tool here. Yeah. All right, so got my box. All right, cha. It's addressed from TFYLP Secret Santa uh, with the uh, the captured prayer address. So crack it open here. Scare my cat. There he goes. Hey, ju just a side note: we apologize ahead of time for the sounds of ripping paper and. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you will fun, have that on this episode. Fun fact: makes my for cat great audio. Running around. Hmm? <laughs> great audio. So, so while Peter's opening this, Christian, I noticed that your lights aren't set up in your cases yet, man. Do I have to go rectify a guy? So that guy gave up, and my mom and my sister were here this morning making new design changes on them. So they should Ooh. be up before the end of the year, hopefully. We'll see. There's a lot of stuff in here. All okay. right, what you got? All right, so I've got four four packages. Now, now, who uh, is your secret Santa? I don't know. Who is that? It's me. Is there, is there a clue? Oh, it's Christian. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Got some I nice, feel bad. Uh, I didn't wrap everything individually. Oh, I'm, am I a bad person for that? Yeah. Uh, Peter, so you know, uh, this is from me and Christian together. Okay. <laughs> and the sword looks like a toothpick. <laughs> Next, I guess we have to move quickly. I have a man of the cog. Oh, cogman! Oh, very nice, very nice. It's cogman um, sword. I, I forgot to attach it to him before I wrapped it. Oh, no, it's all good. Um, I guess we should say that we we each put up a want list on the TFYLP uh, uh, group. Oh yes, we did that. And uh, what I had asked for, and this is. Delightful um, is I, I, I have all the Studio Series stuff uh, sealed, but I wanted to actually you know open up and play with some of it. So this is this is, this is great. <laughs> uh, I got a, a sleeve of deck protectors so I can play with uh, with with the Decepticon insignia, which you know I'm a Destron, so that perfectly fitting. So I can play the uh, the, uh, the, the, the 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 what's it called the card game the card game <laughs> and. Nitro Zeus. Ooh. Oh, very oh, nice. Nice. Very nice. Excellent. Well, Thank you, guys. This is perfect. Best names ever for a Transformer. It's <laughs> a good name. Yes. So well, how about we both. have the person who... So since, since Christian got Peter the gift, why don't we have Christian go next? Sure. All right. I don't know whose mine is, but there's definitely a story to it. Uh, apparently... Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm sorry about it as well. <laughs> oh, well, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for the gift. No worries. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll do the story for for Christian. So I actually ordered um, a specific figure for him, um, but from Japan. So I tried to get it sent from Japan to uh, Christian, and it arrived at the American depot and got sent back. Oh no! And um, because because it takes it takes so long to communicate with um, the person with, with the business I ordered it from, um, which would be Mandarake. Um, yeah, I had to go with an alternate <laughs> source, and so I had to contact Orson and go like, "Help me! Oh God, help me now!" <laughs> <laughs> Can you please well, bail me out? If you need anything from me to help settle that up, just <clears throat> let me know. That's where that great service comes in. Oh man, guys. Guys, what? it's the best Transformer name ever. It's Vertebrake. Uh, oh. I <laughs> uh, love nice. it. Thanks, Hang. No worries, man. That oh, is that's awesome. so cool. 
I love it so much. Thank you. <laughs> I looked at your list. I looked at your list, and your first three things was like, I can't afford that. I'll just go at the bottom too. <laughs> well, those those lists are suggestions. So, yes. You know, when I say I need a G1 sealed Grand Max, you know, it's a it's a suggestion. It's it's like if well, like with, if you're feeling so generous. <laughs> well, like with Peters, I, I picked two things from his list, and then I was around when he mentioned that he wanted those deck protectors, so I got him those too. And they they're perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so should we should we keep going? So it's yes. hanging. Yes. Hey, okay. Your turn. So j- to to make life less painful, I preemptively already slit the box open. Um, <laughs> ooh. Okay. So there's a story behind this. Um, the power of the Prime series didn't, I guess, with Australia didn't do very well with um, the figures that they released. So I asked for a Rodimus Prime. Nice. And the problem was that um, Rodimus and Optimus and I think Nemesis Prime appeared for maybe all of two weeks in Australia. <laughs> Flash in um, the pan, as it were. Oh, it's 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 terrible. Um, we we don't have the last two Dinobots. I think Wave Two. Um, we've only just got the Terracons. <laughs> but that's Australia for me. So I usually order a lot of stuff online. <laughs> But um, yeah, who, it, who did I get? Who did I get? Yeah, who got? Who got uh, I, I was your secret Santa. It was me. Oh, fantastic! Thank you so much for the Rodimus. Not a problem. Yeah, the funny thing is, is how the power of the Prime stuff is now getting clearance in the U.S. So I think like a lot of those are like half off now and yeah. on on holiday sales. So if there's I, I anything you're looking mind. for, we might be able to help you with that. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. All right, so uh, whose turn is it, Lucas? I guess it'd be me. So I'm a little concerned here because uh, this says it's from Parts Unknown and it's full of glitter. Oh, um, no. so <laughs> this, is, this is slightly concerning here. Uh, we'll see. All right, so it's not full of glitter. It's full of packing peanuts, I guess. Uh, okay, it looks like I got a fair amount of stuff here. Is <laughs> okay. Apparently, I I have uh, a lot of stuff. Tacking peanuts, the best gift ever. Yeah, especially if you're yeah. a cat. <laughs> okay, so so is it, all right, so. It says Master Force and Zone G one Autobots. What what are these? Now now who had you? Hold, who had your Hold name? them up to the camera. Where are they? <laughs> yeah, who had Lucas? I bet it was probably what Paul. Is that? Because Paul's not not here to speak up. Yeah. And I know who Surge's was. So. What's what's in what's in the what what's in those bags? Okay, and so then I got uh, some MicroMasters here. Ooh, lots of G G one. And I got a Megatron. This looks like is this like a little Kabaya kit? So that's uh, the world smallest. That, yeah, that's yeah. the world smallest. Boxes. So you don't know who's in there until you open it. Bad dudes. So the the ones in the bags, it looks like it might be like the little pewter like figure. Uh, I think yeah, are they are they are they pewter? Because I think they did yeah. didn't like in the early early to mid two thousands, didn't they like SCF do pewter the figures? K, yeah, the SCF Super figures. Collection SCF. Figure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Master Force was wave, I believe, five and six. It was spread out, and uh, Dialus was in wave five, I think. Well, this is very cool. I have. No idea. Like, what? What is this from? Do you know? That's from. It's That's from a, a small collection of uh, PVC figures called Super Collection Figure. They started around 2001 and ran through about 2005. Uh, there were ten different waves. Each wave came with ten to twelve characters with a couple of chase pieces, and every figure came in either color, clear, or pewter, depending on the wave. Well, it, it looks like. Figure, right? <laughs> I like how it says on their got head. <laughs> oh no! It look it looks like that I got all of the pewter figures. So, 
That is awesome. This is amazing. I had no idea these even existed. Oh, they're a lot so of this fun. Is awesome. You need to open them up and check them out. That's yeah, why the, you should get my book so that you know that these things exist. The, <laughs> the equivalent <laughs> of those in the states was the uh, was the Heroes of Cybertron line. Right. Yes. Yep. Now I'm I'm, um, ass, I'm assuming who got Lucas's uh, whoever uh, could not make it to the okay. show. Okay, and then this says, "Open me last." Oh, so oh, here we go. There you go. <laughs> That's so, I got I got Lucas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's more stuff in the box. There should be more stuff in the box. <clears throat> you have to dig okay. the packing peanuts. Oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, I got the uh, the new Transformers card game. There should be a second box. And then I have a second box from BBTS here. Oh, so, yeah. Now, Rick, did you sign that book? I I did. So you nice. just send me the money for the book later. <laughs> <laughs> And then I got the new studio series Bumblebee. Ooh. That's actually Ooh, that's it's right. actually a really decent mold. I like it. It's a fun toy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm excited for that. So well thank you so much, Rick. This is absolutely amazing. And for someone I think there's uh, like eighteen different pewter figures in there. Wow. You know, the thing that's really hard is is actually finding stuff for people that you don't already have as a Transformers fan, and I don't have this, so thank you so much. Oh, well, you're very welcome. Tra you're very shopping welcome. for a Transformers fan, if you don't know <laughs> what they already have, is very, very difficult. It, sh it should have alerted everyone who knows me that I wrote not n Glitter Inside, or... Um, so I guess <laughs> I'll go. Bomb. Okay, Rick. I, I, have, I have a box, a, l a rather large box, so I don't know what is it is. Is there a hole in one side of it? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no. Not, oh. not yet. Not yet. So I don't know what's in here, and we'll see. And it's, it's a Rick in things. a box, baby. No, <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> so one says naughty, and all right. So this is this is very intriguing. Okay. So one says nice. The That's other the says naughty, and what looks like a bumblebee drawn on it. <laughs> And there's a note. Now, who got there's Rick? A note. Dear Rick, just so we're clear, I am not the real Santa Satan. I lack oh. omniscience. So I have no clue which of these you have, which of these you have earned this year. Oh, okay. So you figure it out yourself. I have drawn Trash Bee or Bumblebee to make the two quality levels clear. Yes, <laughs> on Earth, Santa Anna. Oh, so I love it. Bed. this. This is the. This is the. What I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep this, Anna. Thank you so much. And this is our first show of me and Anna together. On the, yeah, you've never on, met. On so. so I'm going to. That makes it I'm even better. Like naughty gift. Naughty gift. And oh, you love that one, Lucas. It's I feel great. bad. I didn't wrap anything for you. I didn't think that it was going to be all this complicated. Here's this wrapped in brown paper. <laughs> I'm trying to open it without looking at what it is. Oh, <laughs> very nice. It's a converter's bot. Sweet. <laughs> very nice, and it's blue. <laughs> very nice. Didn't, didn't you like hand it that here recently, Anna? Did, uh, have like did a, I what? Didn't you hint at that here recently? You po uh, posted a picture of one of those. Was it was it you that posted one? Oh yeah, that was an older thing. Oh! This is something from recent so this, times. And then there's a good item. So this is the nice gift. All right, this is something that was on my list that I definitely needed one of. Boom. Oh, oh, nice! nice. Awesome. I needed, I needed one. Uh, I haven't I can even open. seen those in person yet. I needed, I needed one that I can open because I have one sealed. So, Anna, thank you very much. I really love You're the welcome. letter. I'm gonna keep the letter. I'm sentimental like that. I have a ton. I have a file cabinet just full of like random papers from Transformer stuff. So, thank you very much. Anna. Someone didn't I follow the instructions he was given. <laughs> <laughs> Because he opened both. 
I know. Rather, he was well, I'm a, Johnny I'm, a greedy bastard. I'm a greedy bastard, so. I knew that would happen. <laughs> so, Anna, it's your turn. Thank you. Yes. So, I have an envelope that came a while ago, and then a few days later, I got a mysterious box that I wasn't sure what it was. Ooh, suspicious. That, that looks like from Asia. China. How much does it weigh? Is it a, does it China. weigh a kilo? <laughs> so. Box looks like it's from China. It's very light. <laughs> it's a very light box. So I'm going to open the envelope first just to see if there's any sort of instructions or explanation in it I for the other item. Those Lewin 01 Optimus is in that envelope. <laughs> I, I'm what sorry. A I can't, I'm, <laughs> what a I, surprise that was. For be. some reason, I can't put Anna in the video. It's weird. I'm not seeing any video from her. Oh, I see her. I see her. I'm on video, lol. Yeah, we all see her. I, you're I've on. Got, you have to look at the YouTube there we video go. then. She, she I cannot be recorded. I'm opening an envelope. It's very exciting. Don't open the what? It says do not open before the oh. Christmas podcast. Xmas podcast, sorry. I don't want to put words in their mouth. Xmas, that's the one we forgot, Rick. <laughs> Xmas. And no, Orson, a host, host always goes last. While she's opening that, I want to point out that Paul has joined the, uh, the feed. Oh, so hi, Paul. Hey, hey, Paul. Sorry, I, uh, my Christmas tree fell over. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I have a couple um, Ooh. Ooh. comic books that I probably have not read yet. No, I think I those not. are exclusive covers. Are they? Cool? They are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. They, really, they really seem like it. They did seem exclusive. I will show them closer. Those oh, are yeah, those are, those are the ripped apparel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I have yeah. the last light one. I don't have the Optimus one. I know somebody who has a ripped hat and something to do with ripped, so I wonder who could have. I don't know who, <laughs> who would have given you those. Suspicious. <laughs> well, that's Suspicious cool. timing as well. Hmm. And then I'm assuming this box also goes with it. Is that a thing? Um, well, I don't, I don't know. I guess the gig is up. Um, that <laughs> That obviously yes, that's from Asia, and I really was not sure how long it would take to get to you, and it seemed like it wasn't gonna make it. So I'm like, oh boy, I better have a consolation prize, and that was what the comics were for. So I you oh. seemed, seemed like you're really into the comics, so I thought that might be a fun thing to get. And uh, let's open up the box and see if if it's the right thing. Awesome. <laughs> hey, well, I do hey, know John, that it's Transformers quick. related. Yes, Lucas. Is um is Anna on the main video? I, I only see her in the smaller video. On I, I'm, I've been trying to drag her down, but it won't let me. I, I've got her in one of my main four. I'm yeah, so sure. Lucas, you can just click on Anna and drag her down to one of your mains. And yeah, I, I'm off. trying to, but it won't let me do that. <laughs> no one can drag me down. Yeah. It's... <laughs> what about what about put you in the corner? Ah, it, it only does it's it for possible. your local local version. The one that I uh, that I have is. Well, your supplier ships in a very difficult way to open. Yeah, I I, I knew that would happen. Your supplier of robots. I got it. I got it. So this is definitely on the list, and I'm definitely excited for it. I think it was the. Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, nice. Ooh, Alpha Trion. Jelly. <laughs> so, some oh, people may know I that had I have it. a very... Go ahead. I have a very strict one per character rule on my figures that I can only have one of every character, except if it's a gift. So, therefore, if I ask for Ultra Magnuses as gifts, I can have infinite Ultra Magnuses. Nice. And I missed this one when he came out, so I am pumped to have this guy in definitely the better paint job. And it has the Alpha Trion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes it has the weird 
out of character alpha tryon, which is fun. <laughs> That's, Not like I had an Ultra Tryon figure. That's one of them I had to sell that I had uh, that I, I regret. Did you sell Ultra Alpha Tryon? Did you sell Ultra Magnus? <laughs> I, I, had, I sold them both actually. Aww. But fortunately, there's a new one coming out in uh, uh, Siege. The, mm. Siege. So, and that one looks pretty awesome too. So the reason the reason I went with that one, Anna, is because everything else in your list was third party. And I didn't want to go there. So. Oh yeah, that's true. You, I was you like, got that thing. I was like, I gotta get, I gotta get the the cool toy. And those are hard. Those are kind of hard to find now. So that's why it's from China. <laughs> <laughs> those are hard to find, and that's yeah. hilarious. Because when I was putting the list together, I thought, hmm, I wonder if I'll get someone who isn't <laughs> so into third party, who's not gonna like this list as much. And I did, and it well, worked I, out. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure I, I got something you wanted, so. Um, well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I will definitely, there? I will definitely enjoy this and totally leave it in the <laughs> box and pristine. Totally. <laughs> oh, Just don't mine. look around the office too much. <laughs> Got to open that. Oh, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> awesome sauce. So, Paul, I believe that would make you next. Okay, sweet. I got two big, thin packages that um, seem like they're probably very close to what I was asking for on my list. So, don't know who they're from. Anybody want to speak up? Uh, they're from me. <laughs> well, yeah. Really? Yeah. They're, they're from both of directly us. directly to you <clears throat> from somebody else. And then the other one came to me and then to you. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah. Probably some form of artwork is my guess. Well packaged. Always good. Oh, wow. This is very cool. This is, uh, a, this is like a little character sketch. This is like exactly what I was hoping for. This is super sweet. Of, uh, I can't, is it Casey? Yeah. Is that yeah. Collar? K- Casey, Co- Casey Collar? Casey Collar? This, uh-huh. is, this is sweet. That's really nice looking. That's my favorite artist. And he signed, wow, this is like a whole package here. Um, Hold on. (laughs) It looks like I got a signed comic of, it's all like really well packaged, so I'm trying not to rip anything quick. A signed issue of (laughs) My Little 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 Pony. Number 33, (laughs) the Dawn of the Autobots with uh, Starscream and Rat Trap on there. (laughs) <laughs> very rad awesome. wow this is like way exactly what i was hoping for yeah. holy cow and a big print too also signed there's my my fly boy sweet that's super awesome wow and i guess there's another package so <laughs> <laughs> the suspense builds i know this, and this is like way i didn't you know i'm new to the podcast so i'm I didn't really know how this was going to go, and I wanted to. I was a little nervous, and I didn't want to be too picky, but I was definitely picky, and I, this is just very kind. So, thank you. Well, you're welcome. And now I'm losing my, my mic. All right, looks like another piece of art. Lots of tape to deal with. Don't accidentally cut your mic cord. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm worried about. Okay. Holy cow. Is that an original? Oh! Wow. wow. Nice. There's a few things here. That is gorgeous. I mean, that's a, that's a shark to con. Who is this from? It's a... Uh... It's a uh, uh, Fabian. Gonzalez. Oh. Fabian Gonzalez. Oh, yeah. he does Fabian awesome Gonzalez. work. He does awesome work. Yeah, with yeah. that. Is that supposed to be me with uh, yeah. Star Scream? That's crazy! Yeah. I, wow! <laughs> I sent him a few pictures of you from your Facebook, and he went off of that. And I just told him have fun with it. Make you know, make it however you want to make it for him. So, oh man, he should have made you Star Scream's headmaster. <laughs> There's another one that's like, you know, the Cassetticons and Soundwave. That's I mean, these great. are, these are he, big. He original. does some he does some sick work. I, 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 yeah. I follow him on Facebook. Yeah, no, I got a couple pieces from Fabian. 
Yeah, I, the Star I, Screams I, I, I original. The Star Screams the original, and I believe the others might be prints. They, oh, they might be. I don't know, but they yep. they seem like they're the legit thing. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So that that's there you go. Bunch of Star Scream stuff that I did not have, and even more. Very surprising. That Sharpticon is just I just I can't get over very... the Sharpticon. Yep. You can't can't beat that. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Those are amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like a like a photo op with Starscream. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's a really Crazy. remarkable piece. I'll, uh, that, I'll, that's I'll take, priceless, take right there. And, yeah, it is totally. I'll, I'll take some pictures and post them to the to the page so that you can see, you know, the full the full things after we're done here. But oh yeah, let's all take really pictures cool. and post them on on the page. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, oh, for, that was, that was from ahead. Sean, right? Yep, that mm-hmm. was for me. So for for everybody watching, if uh, if you're not aware, we do have a, a TFYLP Facebook group uh, that you can go to at uh, facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Uh, we have lots of discussion on there, and we'll post, like if we have uh, things from the show, we might post them on there, and we can talk about them on there, and you can interact <coughs> with the cast, uh, as well on there. Uh, so, Sean, I guess I, I can't drag you down here either, so I'll leave you up in a little bubble there. I apologize for that. I think that's because we have so many on at once. All right. Well, I'll go to cutting on this box. It came all bubble wrapped. And individually Christmas wrapped. So I got a gift for uh, for someone, uh, not podcast related, but the company I ordered the gift from for an extra ten bucks had the option of wrapping the gift in like gorilla duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was ten bucks well spent. Oh my god, ten bucks well spent. Alright, looks like it came with some kind of card to open it first. Oh! It's loose cannons. Transformers Prime, so if this is any indication, it's going to be Transformers Prime related. Which is handy because I am recollecting uh, Transformers Prime series stuff. So... All right, <laughs> that is the dark. Oh, oh very nice. Ooh. Set from uh, nice. UPS. Very, very nice. Cool. Yeah, it looks on great. Those. You know the nice thing about this guy, um, the Dark Energon Starscream, mm-hmm. is he makes a great uh, Skywarp. Okay. Mm-hmm. He will be in my Skywarp. And one more. Now, who had Sean again? I missed that. For those listening, I'm Peter. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate it. Alan Wheeljack. This is the uh, slicer. Uh, yep, that's right. Yep. <clears throat> that's gonna that, be really I cool. I love that one too. That mold with that screaming face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we did them in uh, slicer color. So if you have a Decepticon symbol, you just put it on them. Yeah. Yep. That's a fun set. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very cool, thank you. These are all really Very good well. molds. That is awesome. So I guess since Peter's already gone, uh, we'll go with Jim next. Sure. Well, I got a box here, and I'm pretty sure I know who it's from because I'm can trying to almost make out stuff on the address label through the magic marker, but I'm not positive, so I'm not going to speculate. But if it is who I think it is, and I don't think he's on the show today, he might have been, had a pre-record. Yeah, there were several of the uh, cast members that could not be with us today, uh, so they are uh, recording a separate video that I will be putting together into one video, put up either later today or tomorrow. Uh, so watch for that here on our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel or our Facebook page. 
open says me. All right, Jim, you're going to need to speak up. Or you're kind of, uh, yeah, you're kind of my uh, a little bit I was away. talking to my box. I know that you, we can still barely hear you. <laughs> So are we? F- so are we fairly lucky that most of the people on the podcast, Dude, wrap. <laughs> like, we're actually secret standers for each other? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! I don't even have to open the box to find out what it is. Transformers Generation Special Edition Deluxe Blast Off. Ooh. Oh. Oh, nice. nice. And what does it say? And. Oh, and Megatronus Prime Master. I forgot it came with that. Mm-hmm. Sweet. I like that mold. They tightened it up a little bit. Uh, the Unite Warriors version, the very first release of that mold, uh, uh, mine was rather floppy. Yeah, I, I was same. not. I was Mine's not really loose. With it. Yeah, I have the uh, Ruination one, but I haven't opened it yet. I, I heard they tightened it up on future releases. So, and and then my uh, uh, my. Uh, I got the uh, Amazon one that Jim has there, and it was tighter. So I actually put that on my Unite Warriors Bruticus and put the oh, yeah. Unite Warriors. That is a lovely, lovely oh. thing. And the great thing with that one is that you can actually reverse the arms on it and have him either toy accurate or cartoon accurate with uh, the chest. Or yeah, I see it too well. There we go. I love the paint apps on that one too. I'm, I'm digging the the box art, but now I'm going to have to buy the uh, the other exclusives just so I can finish the little uh, uh, picture on the sides there. What are the other exclusives? Uh, is uh, Repugnus and yeah, Repugnus and Punch. Punch, 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 yeah. Punch yeah. I was I'm I'm yeah. partial to Punch Counter Punch, especially now that the non F guns are out too. Yeah, so. mm. the non F guns really make him. I mean, he's he's great on his own, but the non F guns put him yeah. over the top. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I, I think I might go ahead and speculate, just just because. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it says Surge, so I'm guessing Sergio? Yep. Sergio Hayda? Ah. <laughs> Itself. Sergio? Spe- speaking of, of Sergio... Off, like, the, the bottom loops on the letters that I could make out. Speaking of Sergio, well, once, uh, once you uh, open your gift, uh, I'm your secret Santa, so... Uh, and I apologize, I couldn't do more because, but there was things that was happening around that time that prevented me. So I apologize. Yeah, pl- plus, he doesn't like you very much. Whoa. <laughs> or whether I'm wrong. I held okay. his bag up to thank you. you. Come on. Whoever. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So I think Jim, everyone on the show you. except Duran has opened their gift. Well, what? you know, Orson said I should have went first, but you know, being a, a good, gracious host. I didn't go first because I, I just don't think you, that's, that's that's right. You should have went first. You yeah, should've. you probably should have. Yeah, we probably should have told you. No, you you, you should have went first. Oh. Okay. Uh oh, we're all <laughs> in on so, it. So. Ne- next year. <laughs> next year. So I'm a, I'm gonna just cut right here. Um. So I I don't know who my secret Santa was. So. Oh wow, this is awesome. Just what I wanted. Hold on. Is it a G1 Grand Max? It's the box is a bit small for a Grand Max, <laughs> but you know it might it might be like a Junior or something other. You never know. It is another wrapped gift. <laughs> this is this is going to be a Russian Russian stacking. Oh no! Uh, yeah. It's going to be one of those uh, gifts, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, funny thing is, I did the same gag with uh, Sergio. <laughs> and an, another rap gift. <laughs> is it? Is it true? Could it be someone else's turn? Did I, did I miss that? Uh, round two. Now it's someone else's turn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and okay. All right. Round four. Yeah, I guess it's not too much to spill the beans now. I guess I suppose the intent was to have you unwrap a layer in between everyone's. Oh, turn. okay. Don't stop See, believing, but give someone. Peter, you got to coordinate that stuff with me. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all right. I'm like the chief of staff today for Duran, so you gotta 
You gotta cool in, the, in the future. But, in the future. The question he's is, gonna fire me by the end of the show. Gonna get, so. Yeah, I was gonna say. Gonna <laughs> Who got me? Oops, someone else's turn now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like eight layers here, I'm sure. No, oh, no, I actually have a box now. There's actually a box here. And I bet you there's a box within that box. I bet you there is a box inside the box. And then inside I, that box, there's a map. Yeah. <laughs> a map. So you have to follow the map. Okay, oh, this one just, just and has when drawn you, with and blue And when you get to tape. the map, when you get to the place where the map says, it, there's a there's another map there and it says, now go back home. <laughs> and you go back home and it says, sorry, couldn't get you today. <laughs> Your Error princess four another four, castle. If not found. Oh, 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 yes. Merry Christmas, drawing Your secret Santa gem. Oh, Jim, thanks, man. It is Siege Megatron. Oh, oh nice. Oh, nice. Awesome. It's a gift that keeps on giving, man. Yes, it is. That toy is Absolutely. awesome. I expect photos because there's no Siege in Australia yet. Well, the, 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 don't do this to me, huge, man. Huge <laughs> crotch shot right there. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and, and there, you can, you can see. What? Upside down. Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. This is awesome. That is awesome. So we have a few minutes before our uh, special guest is, uh, our first special guest is uh, set to join us. So, yes, yes, Orson, I see there is a reason. But uh, somebody who knew this ahead of time said, no, you should have insisted, no, Duran, you go first. It would have worked. But. You know, I'm trying to be a gracious host, and not, no, I want to go first. But anyway, uh, I want to kind of go around the room and uh, uh, talk about our favorite holiday memories. Uh, if you've watched the big broadcast of TFYLP each Christmas season, you will know that we like to share our favorite Transformer-related holiday memories, if we have any. Um uh, and I'm not going to go this year because I, you know, you only have so many, and I've I've already shared mine. So I'm going to give other cast members that have not a, had a chance uh, to talk, and I'll, I'll I'll let Rick go first since uh, he's got some other duties to uh, to attend to here momentarily. Uh, duty, <laughs> duty. <laughs> so this is my first time actually being on the holiday broadcast. Because I've never been able to to actually be on the holiday show, so I grew up. Uh, I'm an only child, as far as I know. Uh, there are rumors of another, but you know who knows if it's true. So one year, uh, you know, being an only child, you get some substantial gifts because you don't have to share with a sibling. And my mom got me Metroplex. Skylinks and Trypticon, all for one Christmas. Oh wow! Wow! Whoa. And I remember trying to race Skylinks and Trypticon across the kitchen floor, <laughs> and rolling Metroplex down. Oh, and you uh, broke it? That, <laughs> no, no, I broke them many years later. Many, many, many years later, I broke them. But uh, that that was a great memory. Getting all three <laughs> of those giant Transformers all at once from my mom and. Um, my mom and I, we don't always get along these days, She lives, but she lives here in my home with my family and I, and uh, yeah, I'll make sure to, to give her a big hug when she comes home from Costco today, as long as she brought me back my beer. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, cher <laughs> cherish, cherish the, the moments with your, uh, with your parents, because, you know, uh, I, I'll be honest, this is the first Christmas that I'll have without my father, and... I haven't really been in the holiday spirit too much this year, and it's it's been really really difficult for me. Um, but having great friends like you guys and uh, and and Orson and and several other people, it really helps. Um, but like like you said, you know, uh, even though you may have uh, some problems with your parents from time to time, cherish the moments you have with them because it's. Not going to last, unfortunately. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, Jim? 
since you're up here. And you're mute. Am I? Yes. You. Nope. Nope. Now, now you're up. There Testing. you go. Hey. Hi, everybody. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I can kind of echo Duran's sentiment. Um, my uh, from my own experience, uh, my father and I were were really extremely close, and uh, Christmas is something that I always associated with with, uh, with him more more than uh, most. And uh, I I just I just want to say yeah, uh, just take the time and spend the time with those that are that are most important to you because while we all while we all share the hobby and uh, you know have these different toys in common this, this mutual love ultimately i think to most of us there's there's those ones that we keep out of sentimentality because they remind us of of those same loved ones you know so uh definitely enjoy the holidays as much as you can, be merry, and just—I don't know—just have a merry Christmas. You know, uh, but it, that that being said, uh, what, what's that? Uh, the, I think I think the the lesson here is that you know, as great as, as it is to receive gifts and even give gifts, uh, me personally, I think the the best part of Christmas is the family time together. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and as far as Christmas memories, uh, you know, it's, it, you're going to have those with, you know, the, the favorite toy you've got or, you know, uh, a, a favorite aunt or a grandmother, uh, that you went to every year, things like that. Um, I, I know I, I've already previously shared, uh, my, uh, Christmas memories and I think, I think it might've been last year's episode or maybe the year prior. I don't recall. Um. But uh, I and I've, I've, I'm sure I've mentioned it uh, a few odd times on different episodes. Uh, you know, we when I was a kid, we always had a lot of our family holidays at my great grandmother's house, and so like, like my my uncle from St. Louis or my my other grandparents from you know Hammond, Indiana. We would all like drive down uh, to her house in Paris, Illinois. That was like that was like uh, home base for for everybody, and uh, so you know each year. We would have, you know, we would have the dinner. We would have, you know, the music going or the, the marathon of a Christmas story. You know, uh, for for part of my family being from Hammond, that's that's where the the movie is set to take place. So that was kind of a thing every year. Um, but but uh, you know, as far as some of the best memories, uh, I mean, I I still have photos of myself unwrapping a G1 Axer uh, when I got that one Christmas uh, or or. Uh, you know, uh, Masters of the Universe figures. So I mean, uh, there's there's lots of memories, um, but uh, I, I think uh, pro probably one of the one of the best would would have to be uh, you know the, the holidays I spent down there. <laughs> so. Absolutely. <clears throat> Hang, I like your Australia cat. Does it <laughs> does it meow of an accent? <laughs> <laughs> no, he runs into walls when he feels like it. Yeah, mate. Nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, so, Lucas, uh, what about what about you? Do you have a favorite uh, transformer related holiday memory? Um. Yeah. Um. I was gonna say, I you know, I can't really think of a transformers like actual transformers <clears throat> uh, with the holidays. Because, uh, I mean, I, you know, as a kid, there's a lot of different things I collected, He-Man and all that. I think the closest one that I remember actually on Christmas was actually the GoBots, because I had more GoBots than I did Transformers, because, of course, like, you know, they were, you know, whatever, a few bucks a piece and, and all that. And so I got the uh, the GoBots Courageous, the power suit. Uh -huh. uh, oh, yep, yep. Buying her. Nice. And so, so that was kind of my, my big uh, gift. Uh, I, I remember going to the store around Christmas and seeing Metroplex and Ultra Magnus and, and all those, but I never ended up getting any of those when I was a kid. But um, I did have that Go, GoBots, uh, you know, power suit combiner, and I really love that thing. That is awesome. Lucas, when when you mentioned uh, Masters of the Universe, it reminded me of one I forgot about. I got one Christmas. It was the 
I, I want to say it might have be, might have even been the same Christmas that I got uh, uh, Axe or, uh, but uh, I didn't have any Masters of the Universe. You know, some of the neighbor kids did, mm-hmm. and you know, just out of random, I'd have Transformer, 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 and all of a sudden, I unwrap Masters of the Universe Stilt Stalkers, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, <sighs> WTF? What am I supposed to do with these? I got I got blue sticks with guns on top of them, <laughs> and that's that's one of the hardest to get sets complete. Is right. it really? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah I actually to find. I, I sold all my Masters of the Universe stuff from when I was a kid just because I'm not into it now. But yeah, there was a lot of stuff where I was going through it, and they're like, "Oh, that's actually worth a lot of money." Like that's actually worth a lot of money. I can't you know, <laughs> kind of. Kind of surprising on some of those. I, if I had the room, I'd totally be on board with the uh, the uh, the Masters, uh, the Collector series that's out mm-hmm. that's been coming out for the last couple of years, few years. I, I love them. I think they're or, uh, awesome. And then now there's like like this ultimate version of of He Man and Skeletor. I'm like, I'd totally be on board with those. But I'm like, I I'm sticking to just Transformers because I barely have room for those. You know, <laughs> so uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm fine. Oh, uh, I start to say we're, uh, we're uh, kind of running short on time, and I want to give uh, a couple other people a chance to uh, uh, to, uh, to talk. Anna, uh, you want to go next, and then uh, and then Sean. Uh, I- I'm going to step away briefly, and I'll be right back myself. Sure, but does it have to be the December holiday, or can it be a not December holiday? Uh, your favorite holiday memory. <laughs> awesome. Great because this one's for Easter. But um, I, so as a kid, I was really into the Dinobots, but I didn't get any of them in G1, right? Because I was, I was really little in G1. Um, but by the time G2 came around, you know, I was like eight or nine years old. So I was a little bit older and old enough to um, not completely just eat any Transformer I was given. So my parents decided they would finally get me a Dinobot. So they got me a Grimlock. But it was a G2 Grimlock, you know, it was the blue one. And as a little kid, I had no conceptualization of repaints or alternate colors or anything like that. So my reaction to this blue Grimlock was, what's wrong with it? I don't understand. Why is this blue? And what my mother told me was, oh, I'm sorry. The Easter Bunny is a rabbit, so he's colorblind. (laughs) <laughs> so he had no idea it wasn't right <laughs> yeah because the packaging story. the packaging still had the silver grimlock on it right <laughs> yeah yeah. I, so. I always just that's chalked it up to story. poor circulation <laughs> that's a good story <laughs> alright so we're gonna uh, start bringing in uh, a guest and before we do that um I think there's a few people who are going to log off. So before they do, uh, is there anything uh, final you guys want to say to, to our listeners this year? Oh, uh, that's me. Peter, that's a great picture. Yeah. Me 1984 opening up a uh, gen one jazz. Um, nice. I'm, uh, I'm very grateful for the G one reissues this year. Cause I'm giving them to my daughters for Christmas. It's awesome. Uh, so anybody, anybody else? Thanks. All right. Happy so, holidays. Thanks. Happy so, holidays, everyone. Yeah. Who's leaving? Happy Anna, holidays. Peter, and the other guys are staying on, right? I think so. All right, guys. So. Well, thanks so I'm much. Feeling, uh, guys. If you guys are on later, you'll be able to uh, to join us uh, at the grand finale. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right bye, awesome. guys. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, Anna. Bye. Bye, guys. All right, so let me see here if I can go ahead and add in our special guest. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, let's see. Special guest? Duran Land. Let's see. <laughs> Duran Land is the special guest. <laughs> Duran, that's right. <laughs> Surprise, it's Orson. <laughs> All right, so 
we are trying to figure out how to add this person. Bum, bum. And technical. I was right. <laughs> it was Duran. We were right. <laughs> Duran, we're having we're having a. That's oh, true. here we go. Yes. Now our first yeah. guest uh, is is I'm a really big fan of his, and uh, he's a really popular person uh, within the uh, Transformers community. Uh, and without further ado, uh, let's uh, let's get him in here. I'm here. And uh, here. Bobby Skullface. And there Bobby's camera looking. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Yeah, it is now. <laughs> Welcome to TFYLP, Bobby Skullface. Thanks for having me. How you guys doing? Doing great. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now, uh, for those who don't know, and I don't know what corner of, the, uh, of a rock you have been crawled under, uh, Bobby has uh, been uh, a popular uh, YouTube reviewer. Uh, I guess columnist. I guess you could say. I, I guess. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it is that I that I do? I mean, uh, he he does some really great videos on uh, on YouTube, and I thought you know I, when I was trying to put together a list of guests for this episode, I wanted to look within the uh, the Transformers community itself and find uh, some people that that really stand out uh, with uh, with what they do and one of the first ones that came to my mind uh was uh bobby uh you know i met you at tfcon uh this year tfcon usa mm -hmm. and uh was able to uh, chat with you briefly and i, I just wanted to, to extend to you a an offer opportunity to come on the show and and say hi to the fans and and answer questions if, if need be and uh yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I mean, thanks for having me. I mean, you guys are pretty established. I've been around for quite Wait. some time. I whoa, sung whoa, whoa, the time out, time out. How do we know that's the real Bobby Skullface? <laughs> that's a fair point. <laughs> did, I ever, did, did you guys hear that story about the guy that wanted to fight me at TFCon because he thought I wasn't me? Oh, wow. No. Oh, no. did not hear uh, that. There was a guy. Uh, I was uh, – God bless him. He, he uh, I took a picture with another guy, and I, I came around – my table and I, I could see him I'm, I'm not good at very much but I am good at reading people and I am good at reading situations and I could see a look in this guy's eye that was not a good look so I zeroed in on him and I talked past people that were in front of me and said how you doing to him to make sure he knew that I I was aware of his feelings yeah and um he said I'm okay and I said okay and then he kept looking at me, and I was like, you good? And he said, oh, I'm good. I got a question, though. I said, let's have it. And he said, are you really Bobby Skullface, or are you just parading around like him? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like, do I sound like Bobby Skullface? And I, and I said, uh, I said. And I, you're, you're a pretty tall dude, right? You're, you're like my height. And I'm 5'11", and some change, probably. But I, he said, um. I, I said, I'm really, I'm, I'm him. I'm Bobby. And he said, uh, ha, let me see your arms. So I like pulled up my sleeves to show my tattoos. And he was like, okay, cool, man. Just making sure there wasn't somebody out here trying to make money off your name. And this, and that. <laughs> it, was, it was cool. I mean, he ended up being very cool. Uh, he was looking out for me, but I thought he, I thought he wanted to, uh, I thought he wanted to take me to the mattress, so to speak. <laughs> hey, I think that is a great idea for the next convention. You get a bunch of different people to man your booth <laughs> yeah. for, for like 10, 15 minutes, all wearing the masks. And pick the pick, pick one out of the lineup, the real one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. That would be good. That would be good. So, yeah, I, I'm, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really me. I can show, wait, I know, I know how to prove it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, look at these hands. <laughs> Do these hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, no. for uh, the people who who uh, don't know, wh what is the story behind the mask? Um, it's really, uh, I was on a podcast um, a long time ago, and uh, I, <laughs> we were they were talking about some third party upgrade for the generation Blitzwing that was out at the time, and it, it the third party upgrade had a skull face for it. 
and they were calling it Blitzwing Skullface. And I just kind of haphazardly said, I wish I had a cool name like that. And then they started saying, well, I'll call you Bobby Skullface. And then we ended up doing a, a live recording. Well, not a live recording, but a in-person recording one time. So I went and tried to find a mask to wear as like a joke for the recording. But then it kind of just stuck. And now if I take it off, I'm Bobby Regular Face. So I can't. <laughs> I <gotta lose. laughs> You know what I mean? Just Bobby Face and then Bobby Skullface. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's kind of like uh, you know it's it's built into the, the fabric of what I do now. So, so do you walk around the house at times with the mask on or? Um, no, but my it's funny because my kids all go through this period of not knowing what to make of it, uh, and then kind of adapting to it. And my my baby's got on my baby got on board pretty quickly, but there's always this like awkward year or so where they don't know exactly what to make of it. But now they're all on board, so they don't skip a beat. And my wife has never asked to put it on so, in any in a weird way. So at times, your 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 lovely wife, um, mm. I forget her name. I'm I'm sorry, Laura. Laura, Mrs. Thank you. Mrs. She'll, she'll <laughs> come on the show, but yeah. she is um, not in a mask. Yeah, at first we at first we hit it. Um, but nobody seemed to care. Every now and then I'll talk about, every now and then I'll talk about taking the mask off and like, um, people will, you know, I'll get both responses, right? It's like, I think it's like Marvel comics w would talk about killing Aunt May, you know? And like people would write in to Marvel and be like, you have to kill Aunt May. She's just dragging the story down. It's a, and then the other half writes in and says, if you kill Aunt May, I will never read another Marvel comic as long as I live. And so that's how I feel. I feel kind of I feel kind of stuck in it in a way. But with her, they didn't care, and she'd rather not have to like find some elaborate disguise. Because I mean, we used to wrap her head like in skull face scarves and all sorts of stuff in order to in order to hide it. But people really didn't seem to to care whether or not she was in any sort of garb so and she does she doesn't care so it's easier honestly uh, uh, you know it'd be it'd be really cool to uh uh maybe for like a like a little christmas uh segment that you might have uh, give her a a gift and she opens it up and it's a skull face mask with a little pink bow on the side. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, um, I, so like I do a music video every year, right? On the first, it drops on New Year's Day every year. And the first year, I had her in a mask with a wig over top of the mask to like, just, you know, to establish that this was her. And then it turned into a scarf, and then it turned into something else, and and now it's just, now it's just nothing. But I try to do, I see, I try to do fun stuff. Like I last year, I think I went live on Christmas Eve and read the night before Christmas, just to like, I don't know. I, there's a time to take this stuff seriously, to have a serious conversation about it. And then there's a time when you have to also back down, back it down a notch and say, but we can't always take it this serious. There's, it's the right tool for the right job. Like you guys had that, um, I, I shout this episode out a lot, um, but you guys had the, the brave, you covered mm -hmm. Brave and like two parts. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, was a, that was tremendous. And it was, and you guys took it serious and it was the right time to take it serious. But I mean, now you got Christmas lights around your head. So like it, now's not the, the right time to take it serious. You know, like yeah. it's, it's finding that balance and, and making sure that it's not, I don't know. I have a hard time taking things serious anyway, but every now and then there's, you, there's a, there's there, a place there, you, for it. You gotta have serious mixed with some humor uh, to, to, to add to the realism and and keep it fresh, and and also like like most of us are creating content about a you know a children's property for adults, yeah. and adults still have adult sensibilities. So you have to that's the that's the people I want to talk to are the people that that know it's for kids and know it's a hobby or know it's a a niche, but at the same time have the the real like authentic passion and love for it that can can get as deep as you want to get with it you know it, but then at the same time at the end of the conversation regardless of agree or disagree can say you know but it is just toys to sell you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it, it, it it's nothing to get worked up over but you can have it's just like marvel dc star wars i can have conversations about this stuff and get as deep as you want to get but then at, after that let's 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 acknowledge that it is just fantasy 
BS, you know, like mm -hmm. it, 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 it's a hobby. It's not a, right. a yeah. way of life. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. What does your family think about your skits? Um, they, so my, 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 my wife has like, she, she has mixed feelings about it because sometimes, um, I do like, I, I'm interrupting everything. Like she's cooking dinner and I'm like, look, I got to get this done. I need everybody here. I need, look, you stand here. I need you here. And, and it's like a pain. My kids love it because they like, they just love doing it. Um, and then every now and then skits go terribly wrong. Like there's this one that went wrong recently that she doesn't even she doesn't know about i'm trying to keep an eye but um on the, the fans toys quietest one i talk about how uh i compare fans toys to a recipe and they add all the right things but when it comes to fun of the transformation they don't want it so i'm pouring in all these seasonings and i'm pouring in the paint and the sculpt and the you know the love that they put into stuff and then i'm like fun get this stuff out of here and i throw it and i and i was just i meant to throw it and hit the couch but i missed and hit the fireplace and it blew all over like all the <laughs> so when, you, when, you go when you watch that um if you go and you watch that skit you can hear it because i left it in there the sound in there of it like you know, being destroyed yes um and then I, I um it's just the top part that broke so i put the cap back on and i put like some putty inside so that it stays on but like there's only like this much in it now like it used to be <laughs> full and i just hit it in the back and i haven't heard anything about it like since <laughs> so um uh, and by the, you know, by the time it happened she's like uh, you know by the what that means is that she hasn't used it in so long so that by the time she ends up using it in her head she's just going to be like man i use more than this than i thought and it's all going to <laughs> You, you ever thought about just taking something else and putting it in in there instead? So no. when she does use it, it like it just changes things completely. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> My wife does all of, like pretty much all of the cooking. So I um you know she's a tremendous cook. So I, I don't want to mess. I don't. I, I'll be doing myself a disservice. So like you had a, a great table at TFCon this year, and, and you really you 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 have a brand onto yourself. Which not a lot of podcasters or reviewers have. Like, yeah. Pew has a brand to himself. I would say, like, Chris Ho has a brand yeah. onto himself. So, you, you have branded merchandise for sale. So, I kind of figured, like, you should almost offer, like, a Christmas card or a season's greeting card of you and your family, but you're, <laughs> you're all in masks. Yeah. But you're all, like, dressed up. It's like, it's like a nice, you know, maybe you take the time to do a, a family one. But then two seconds later, you all put the mask on and you just take a family picture with the masks. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot of like there is a business side to what I do, and I've always been transparent about it. Um, but like I mean, we're not talking we're not talking significant money. Uh, well, I guess it depends on what's significant, but we're not talking about tens of thousands of dollars. Um, but I started all of this. All of this started from drawing and. Uh, making donations from those drawings to charity. So every year I, I create merchandise. I do the YouTube stuff. I do um, podcasts. I do whatever I do, a lot of art stuff. And a portion of that goes to a different charity. And the, the company is called Defending Our Missing Heroes. And the, the goal of it was to give back to modern day heroes. So like we've given to wounded warriors, we've given to um, concerns of police survivors for police officers that were killed in the line of duty. We've given to National Fallen Firefighter Foundation for firemen that were killed in the line of duty. And, you know, we've, we've tried to do other things that sometimes have been um, more tricky because like some of these charitable organizations like they're they can, they can be funny about where they take money from so if they go and, and watch something that i do and they're like well we don't like what you represent so we're not even going to take your money because we don't want it affiliated with our organization but those four have been great to work with and we've just been alternating them through the years and that's that's why all of this started um so my wife handles all of the I, I hate to call it this, but all of the business side of it, she handles all of that. I do all the rest, and then she prices it because I'm trash at business, at anything, at most things. So it, when I do something, I'm like, I'm like, what do you think we should sell this for? Uh, eight bucks? And she's like, it costs sixteen to have it made. And I'm, I was like, well, I can't. I feel I'm the type to just give stuff away, but she keeps all the checks and balances. She's really. I mean, my wife is an amazing, uh, amazing person, and she keeps 
a lot of the wheels grease behind the scenes. Of, so it, of it sounds it. like we should have her on as a guest. Next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she she wouldn't do it, but yeah. Sign, she, signs she of a good mate. Yeah, she's so perfect, yeah, perfect um, compliment. Is there uh, an organization you want to plug this year that that we should consider if if we're like to make any uh, monetary donations? Um, n- no, uh, any one of those those three are are great to deal with. Uh, in my experience, I know some people have said things about wounded warriors, but I, I can only speak on my experiences, and my experiences have been positive with them. Um, this year, we're actually donating directly to a family that lost somebody in the line of duty that's like a maryland homegrown you know guy so we're taking care of them specifically and we've, we've actually already made the donation you know in time before christmas because there's kids and all sorts of stuff so and it wasn't you know it's not much but it's something you know um so yeah any of those organizations are always good absolutely so um Real quick, uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I want to say from a personal standpoint, I absolutely love your reviews. You've helped Thanks. me transform so many toys that I can't even I can't even begin to uh, to list them all. And That's funny. Uh, I look forward to sit down Saturdays like like religiously. So yeah, so that seems to be what everybody is kind of more gravitating towards with my channel, and I I like that because I like doing it for one. And I like I it, it's an edge. It gives me an edge. I don't have a lot of edge in anything else. And I've been doing this for five years. And you start to realize that like you can't really compete with guys overseas or guys that have deals or whatever that get stuff a month or two early. Because I think the large majority of people that watch reviews, they just want to see the figure and what it can do. Yeah. I think I think that my viewership is different in the sense that I think a lot of those people wanted to know specifically what I think of it. And I think that that sets me apart, but it's hard to compete with the guys that are getting in a month early, but sit down Saturday is something that those guys can't compete with me on because it's, um, and, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, healthy competition, but like it's, um, it's my voice. And I don't mean that literally, but more figuratively. And that's, that's a strength. It's a strength of mine. And I've, I've been very appreciative of everybody that's that's um, really shown appreciation for Sit Down Saturday because that stuff takes a lot of work. A review takes me about two to three hours, like your average review. A Sit Down Saturday takes me five to six, e- like easy. You know, it's I start at usually nine and I'm done by one or two in the afternoon for Sit Down Saturday. Awesome. I have not. Uh, did you post? Have you posted one today? So far, yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, I, yep, yep. Okay. I post it. They, all my videos post it for, for the most part, give or take, you know, a few special exceptions. But ninety nine percent of my videos post at six a.m. Eastern Standard every, you know, when they come out. Because I, I watched one earlier, and I don't know if it was today's or last week's, but it's the last few weeks have been absolutely uh, crazy for me. So, <laughs> but I yeah, the hot dates and stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. I think, <laughs> <on dates. laughs> yeah, we're all kind of going through it. Absolutely. So, real quick, uh, mm-hmm. you want to have uh, some holiday wishes uh, to the to the fans and uh, and the viewers? Absolutely. I mean, um, anybody. I mean, I've always been uh, inclusive. Like, um, it's it's not uncommon for people to make contact with me and. Um, you know, if they're local, I'll invite them over for dinner. I'll invite them over to get together, have a drink, whatever, just to meet people. I've always been inclusive because when I got into this, a lot of it seemed exclusive. And there was kind of, I don't want to say like good old boy mentality, but there was groups of people that stuck together and Clips. the borders were kind of, yeah. And so when, when, when I started, I wanted... I wanted like I was Statue of Liberty, like you're weak, you're tired. I wanted everybody, like anybody that wanted to have in and have a healthy discourse about any of this stuff is what I wanted. So anybody that's ever shown me the slightest bit of support or watched a video or enjoyed anything or like, absolutely, thank you and um, happy holidays and never hesitate to reach out and don't be a stranger. This is there's nothing special about me or anybody on this panel except absolutely. maybe Rick. Um, so uh, you know, like reach out. You know what I mean? It's just people. It's not. It's, this is not a celebrity. This is not a real thing. It's just people creating content on a on a media outlet. That's all it's, it is. It's Absolutely. people enjoying their hobby. Yeah, yeah. 
and, and that's that's why we gotta remember not to hate on people and yeah. not yeah. create toxic environments when we post online because yeah. we're just talking about toys at the end of the day. Yeah, I think that that is like it's different to it's different to not like a product and you not like a product and we and we both feel the way that we feel passionately and we can have a passionate conversation about that. Um but like that's where it stops for me. Like I don't I don't I'm not going to tear apart somebody personally for liking or disliking something that I don't. That's uh, that's I think that comes from confirmation bias where people want you to feel the way they feel so they get personally upset with you for feeling the way that you feel then I'm I, I don't kind of subscribe to any of that yeah well I mean there's always going to be those people out there that that don't like your content don't like what you do don't like what you stand for I mean you as a content uh, producer and, and myself I'm sure you've gotten your uh, your share of "Quote unquote hate mail," you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I've had people come up and say, "I watch your show. I don't really care for it." You know, I'm like, "I'm like, that's cool." I, you know, I, I'm. I, I wish that you would like my show, but if you don't like it, I'm not going to sit there and twist your arm to watch it. You know, yeah, nobody uh, makes anything with yeah. the intent of it being disliked. But yeah. at the same time, not everything is not every shoe fits every foot. You know, and Absolutely. um. For all the the negativity that people like, for all the negative t- negativity that I've gotten from people, there's two things that still amaze me. Is that one, I have always been and will always be the voice of the consumer. Like I, every fight that I fight, I'm fighting for them. And two, I've never had a problem in person. I've never with as much as some people seem to really loathe me inside and out i've never gotten any of that energy in in person so for all i know these people don't really exist because i don't have any evidence of it outside of an anonymous post and anonymity is the armor of cowards Mm -hmm. that that is my saying of the day my dad used to say that is beautiful yeah Awesome. Uh, Bobby, I want to thank you so much uh, for joining us today and uh, no, taking time out of your day. Uh, again, we're really big fans of, uh, of, of you and your, uh, your stuff that you produce. Really awesome. And I, I hope you it. and yours uh, a very happy holidays and uh, see you at the next show, man. Yeah, same to all you guys. Thanks for having me on. It's, thank uh, you, Bobby. It's an honor. Absolutely. Take care, man. Thanks for everything Thanks. you do. Take it's care, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Our, our next guest is set to, to set to join us, and I and Rick, I just heard from guest number three, and he is okay. uh, he is ready uh, very shortly. Uh, but well, our very next I, guest, uh, I'm making the call right now. Okay. Our very next guest, if you have watched or seen the uh, oh. the Bumblebee movie, uh, you would see that uh, or hear this man's voice, uh, Mr. John Bailey. Welcome back hey, to FYLP. What's going on, guys? Long time no see. Oh Absolutely. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> hey, John. Have you, have you got, have okay. you got video capabilities? Uh, I, I can. Hang on. Okay. I'll have to change my uh, have to change my my, my technologies. Okay. Um. Well, while uh, while you're doing that, um, John has uh has been around for uh, for many many years. Uh. And if you watch the Combiner Wars cartoon, uh, you was Optimus Prime in Combiner Wars, correct? Correct. And then now, uh, in the new Bumblebee movie that's in the theaters now, you are the voice of Shockwave and Soundwave. That is 100% correct. And that is, that's a milestone for you, really, isn't it? That's a, that, that's a childhood dream slash career goal come true. So my my guess is from from following on his trailers and all the other things that that you've done, uh, how it should have ended. Um, you started off with a passion as just a, just a fan of like movies or TV shows and comedy, and just wanting to do stuff from just from just being a fan, of. and that um, kind of evolved into a career. Is that is it correct in that's, saying that? That's, that's not exactly accurate. Um, I'll try to do this the short version because it's the weekend and families are already bugging me about going to do stuff. Um, <laughs> so, 
uh, when I heard, I, I first heard Peter Cullen's voice in Voltron before I heard it in Transformers. And when I heard that opening, uh, it was back before TV was like the, the uh, uh, you know, the bug lights, zappers, where TV comes on, kids just instantly stop functioning and have to watch. Like I was kind of just, it was just on, you know, I wasn't paying too much attention to it. But when that opening came out, and as soon as I heard Peter Cullen with the, the Voltron, the Thunder Earth, it like did just blew me away. I was like that that voice is special, you know what I mean? And I instantly became a fan of just that voice. I didn't understand what it was I heard. I mean, I understood the cartoon, but I just I didn't know who that was or you know anything about voiceover or voice acting. I mean, when you're a kid, you don't really think about you know the characters being people doing a job. And that led to an interest in uh, I was already interested in cartoons and stuff, but that that specifically got me thinking about i would love to be able to do that whatever i just heard i would love to do that one day and then when i heard him again in transformers i was instantly hooked and my brother and i spent a lot of years trying to figure out who was who because back then they didn't credit who did what voice so it was uh it was just a guessing game for a long time we thought jack angel was up to the front but it it sparked the it sparked the interest it inspired me to pursue the career and then uh later on in life I was working just, you know, regular nine to five type jobs. And uh, my wife got uh, made my MySpace page for me, which was like, I thought social media was really a stupid idea. And then uh, she, I know, right? So glad I didn't invest in Facebook. Uh, so she's like, it's got all your favorite things. It's back before a pop up locker and stuff. And something popped up. And I'd been doing voices since I was five years old, just doing impressions. I was just really good at imitating what I could hear and uh, just had a love of character voices in general. And see uh, a pop-up ad showed up for a place that was close by our house and it was like we're looking for talent blah 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 and she's like oh you should go try and i was like oh this 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 is a stupid thing i do it's like basically a party trick and she's like no you should you should try for real the worst they can do is say no what have you got to lose and i was like oh man when you put it that way i don't i don't really see, see how i could not try it at least and say i tried it you know all right let's see if this works so i so i was way off uh-huh. great there. Yeah, yeah, not not, not not way way off. Uh, you, you were in the ballpark, but yeah, I was a fan of I was a fan of animation, and uh, and the characters just in general, just just vo- this the human voice. I don't know. I've always had a fascination with the human voice. Is my is my video showing up? I can't. It, it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, an awesome now. flash va- uh, flash jacket. That that jacket. Yeah, it's is a awesome. it's a little flashy. Yeah. But, uh, so <laughs> looking good, John. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of where it came from. It was just a it was just a right place, right na- right time, and a, a door opened, and I gave it a shot, and it just slowly built up a career. I, and I honestly never imagined that I would get to this point. You know, I just thought this was a cool thing I could do. I could make a little extra money at it. You know, maybe a few hundred bucks a month. But then it ended up, ended up being my full time career, and uh, it was just tons of stuff coming at me, more than I could really keep up with. And it was really slow at first. It took two or three years to really get anything where I was actually making more money than what I was doing in my old job, but you know, it just kind of ballooned from there. And I would, I would, every, any, anything I would work on ten, tended to do really well, and that gained recognition. And I kept getting asked to to join in things that became like pop culture things that were you know cool, like the Honest Trailer stuff. It was literally just a YouTube collab for me. I didn't think anything about it, and I never even included that in my actual voiceover career because I'm like, I don't want people thinking, oh, he's not a real voice actor. He's just some internet voice guy because that's what a, that's what a lot of businesses would do. Clients would be like, oh, so you're not a real professional. You're just internet voice dude. <laughs> so it was it was it was a matter of trying to keep those two things separate so I, they didn't confuse. Well, you know, they didn't confuse fun for work. And now that it once once it became mainstream, it did change things. So then people were actively looking for me to do kind of what that was what I was doing for other things on the internet because the internet stuff became more popular than my professional work did. But uh, the, the way this whole thing came about was literally because my agent sent my, my satellite demo or my, my character demo, which has like Optimus Prime's like one of the first things you hear in it. And it was from Combiner Wars and Paramount was looking for somebody to do scratch for Optimus Prime. And my agent sent it in they were like, Oh, this guy sounds just like him. So they brought me in to just, just to do scratch. So I knew all along that Peter Cullen was going to come in and replace anything I'd done. They just wanted to finalize the script and the animation and stuff first, so they didn't have to bring him in over and over and over again. So I did like four sessions. And in between those sessions, we had auditions come in three different times for a bunch of Transformers characters. And I knew it was from Bumblebee, and I knew who the characters were, and they all said, you know, as close to the G1 voices as possible. I'm like, oh, this is it. This is my shot. So I'm going to give it... And then nothing happened from it. I didn't hear anything back. 
we were there was a lot of confusion as to why the uh, the same auditions kept coming from different clients, and we don't know if there was a studio back and forth. We I don't I really don't know what happened. Um, but for the last session, I literally only I, I, I keep saying literally a lot. I don't know. I'm just I'm busy. And, uh, I went in just to do Optimus Prime's voice, and that was it. And they they told us on the way there, there's going to be some other voices that that they'll want you to scratch. And of course, Steve Bloom was there that day, so they came out and asked like. <laughs> Uh, which voices? Uh, which voices have you booked before? And of course, Steve's like, done it, done it, done it, done it, done it. I'm like, done and booked before or can do? Because <laughs> I can do so, them all, but booked before, you know. So uh, I I got two important questions for you. Okay. Uh, we grew up idolizing some of these things, and you got to grow up, and now you get to perform a character. So what's it like now performing a character that that you've known about your entire life, and then what's it like getting to be in a film with uh, an actor that you've heard? Yeah, or, that or was known that your, was the thing. I life. just I didn't know that was what's because we were told this is all just even even Steve was like I'm not you know nobody's 100 percent on these voices. That was David Sobolev didn't know he was going to be Blitzwing. We were all just doing scratch at the time, so uh, I was just like. I'm in I'm in the big leagues. I'm up against some major competition with guys who have worked on Transformers for a long time, and I'm still just you know the rookie here. And um, I mean, Travis Knight even told me he's like, dude, if I could sound like you like all the time, I would just never stop talking like Optimus Prime like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, my I wife gets a little to- don't disagree. <laughs> my, my wife gets a little annoyed with it after a few hours, but uh, but yeah, it was it was one of those things where I I didn't know. I didn't know that this was going to come to fruition. It was just one of those things where I was like, I'm, I'll kill myself if I, if, or I won't be able to sleep at night if I don't at least try. So after, after they gave Steve all the roles that he'd booked before, there was only, the only things left for me were, were Ratchet and Ironhide or Ironhide or Wheeljack. I can't remember. Ironhide, is, I think his line ended up getting cut. But it was like, there was two characters left over. And I was, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna hate myself if I don't at least try. So I asked Mr. Knight, I was like, would you mind if I tried for some of the other characters? He's like, oh, you want to you wanna give some of the other ones a shot? I'm like, well, two of these are like my favorite of all time because <laughs> Shockwave and Soundwave are my two favorite characters. Optimus Prime's always been my third favorite. Everybody always assumes like, oh, Optimus must be John's favorite because he does the voice so good. But Shockwave's always, Shockwave, and I even told he's like, why, why Shockwave? Why is he your favorite? I was like, well, think about it. He's got one eye, one arm. He's handicapped. And he managed to just, he, he he managed to defeat all the Autobots and the Decepticons. If you read the comic, like I've I've totally fanned out on him. And he's like I, he's like I didn't even know that, that that was a story. I was like actually there's a whole story with Shockwave and Bumblebee called Plight of the uh, Plight of the Bumblebee that that's I kind of thought that movie kind of felt like this movie. Um, but so I, I gave it my best shot, and after I did a, did a few of the voices, because we actually talked about that, I was like I'm surprised you didn't get David Warner. He's like what do you mean David Warner? I'm like well David Warner from Tron, you know Sark. And the voice of Ray, Ray Salgul, I said he was he was the impression that Corey Burton was doing when he came up with the voice for Shockwave, and he didn't even know that. And he was like, "Oh, that's actually kind of a cool story." I was like, "Yeah, I, was, I always wondered why they never got David Warner to voice Shockwave. That'd be so awesome." But after I did a few of them, he's like, "Dude, you're blowing my mind. You sound just like the original characters." I was like, "Well, these are the voices I've been practicing for thirty something years, so I should be pretty good at it by now." <laughs> but then when I found, and I didn't find out for a long time, so. The, uh, the the shorter version of the story is that uh, I have this website where I get some, some free movie screenings, and they, they didn't tell us what it was. They just said, we're looking for parents with kids ages such and such and such. And I'm like, I've got kids in that range. So I took my two youngest kids, and then we get there and find out when we get there that this is the, fir- the very first screening of Bumblebee movie. Like, we were the first audience to see it, which was in and of itself really rare that that would I mean... Never tell me the odds. <laughs> it was like one of those situations like, there's no way this would ever happen. And after we, when we watched it, not only were the voices that I did in it, all of them, including Optimus, were me in the screening version. It was, just, it was mind-blowing to see Holy that big screen and surround sound and me as Optimus Prime. And, and my you kids had your kids there. Out. Yeah, my kids were just freaking out. It felt like a MasterCard commercial. You know, like for everything else, there's MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was like this, this, this is one of those moments where like, this isn't really happening, right? I'm in a movie right now or I'm at a prank show. <laughs> And my kids were like, what does this mean? I'm like, I don't know if this means anything. These are all just temporary voices. We don't know. Because I did. I recorded six characters. And in that version of the film, Steve Bloom was uh, was Cliffjumper in that scene. If you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it. But uh, And I, I, really liked, <laughs> I, I really liked his performance as Cliffjumper. And then they, they ended up going with somebody else. And he ended up being Wheeljack. So you just never really know what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, it was just like... 
that alone, like for me, I was like, I I am good with this. Like <laughs> this is cool enough. Being able to see the screening with my voices on the big screen, I'm good with that. You know, because it was already a great paycheck anyway. Just being able to work on the film, but then came at the end of October. And they filled me in there. They, they, uh, cause I was, I was crossing my fingers, maybe hoping to get one. And if I didn't get any, I was still would have been fine with it. Cause I was, you know, any chance to get to work on something transformers. And, you know, even if it didn't end up in the final film, it was like, I know that I worked on it. I got to hear it in the, in the theater. So I'd be great with that. And then she's like, Oh, you, you booked two characters. And I was like, two, <laughs> not just one, two of them. And if you look at all the characters who don't have a lot of lines, because the only characters that really got a lot of screen time, obviously Optimus had a lot of lines. Bumblebee had quite a few at the very beginning. Uh, Cliff Jimber had one scene. And then the, the two main uh, Decepticons, who were obviously, th- those are, you know, movie stars, not, not just regular voice actor folk. And so compared to everybody else that was in the voice cast list, I really had, like, the most to say out of everybody else, which I was, like, kind of blown away with that, too. And, uh, and you can hear me in not one but two scenes. And I was just so freaking. And they're my two favorite characters, which was freaking. I was just blown away. It was they're so iconic funny. characters. Yeah, well, they are. And he, I kind of wish they hadn't cut the line because in the original version, after uh, after I said Ravage Eject, I said Operation Annihilation or Operation Destruction or something. Like that. It was such an iconic like Transformers moment, and they left it in the screening version. I was just and even. You could tell the ones that loved Transformers because half the audience that you could tell were Transformers fans. They were like, "Yeah, woo!" You know, from that, <laughs> just that one part because I was like, "That's such a Transformers thing." And then they cut that one part down just to Ravage Eject, which was still really cool because that is still an iconic thing. But the whole Operation Destruction is just kind of a sound wave thing. So, so every- John, John, you you mentioned Scratch. So after they decide they're going to use you, did you have to go back in to do to do the lines? No, no, the Scratch was they keep it? the Scratch is like the finished audio for it. But if if they they had multiple people reading for multiple characters, so it was like you really didn't know who was going to be who, and if or if you were even going to be involved by the time the final version came out. So I didn't find out till the end of October, and I had to keep my mouth shut. And normally. I sit on a whole giant pile of non-disclosure agreements, and I'm just like, yeah, it's work is work, job is a job. But for this one, being a fan for 30 years of this one, this one was hard to not say anything about because it, it would have been cool if it had just been, oh, I worked on Transformers. But voicing my two favorite characters in a Transformers movie was like really hard to keep my mouth shut about. Absolutely, it's just my well, blowing. You know, I, I, I hate to I hate to uh, cut this short, but we uh, we have one more guest that's scheduled to come on. Uh, but ooh, ooh, ooh. Go, go ahead, Rick. Is, is that <laughs> Real the room quick. that you? Is that the room where you record honest trailers? This is my brand new booth. I just got this about a week ago, and I finally got it put in. So sound, uh, normally, the sound is normally I recorded in the the walk-in closet that's, that's right <laughs> next door. But this is this is a one a little step higher than my wife's. My wife hates this thing because it's a giant eyesore, but she gets her walk-in closet back. So it's a. <laughs> I think she gets a win out of that. But, but you can point at that box and say, that box makes you money, honey. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's, this is a tax deduction. She's just going to get over it because it's beautiful in here. It even has lights in the ceiling. Like, I can make the lights in here purple. <laughs> so did you do that while you were recording for Shockwave? <laughs> you know, I, went to, I went to Paramount to record for Shockwave, but I did like the fact that the foam in here is green and the, perp, the lights are purple. I'm like, I'm total con colors in here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, John, uh, I do want to thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, I, I look for, I have not got to go see Bumblebee yet. It came out last night uh, nationwide. Uh, plan on going to see it uh, sometime this weekend, and I am looking so forward. Uh, I've, I hear a it lot is, of great things. It's such about a this great film. movie. It was man. great. It was I would have I would have loved movie. it even if I wasn't in it. I would have still loved this movie because this is this is what we've been wanting for a really long time. And out of the big three that came out this holiday season, Spider Verse is a great movie. Aquaman has a, is a lot of fun, but both of those movies have just so much just shoved in. And this the, Bumblebee is a much calmer, like heartfelt story. It's got a lot more substance to it and a lot more like connection and all the nostalgia too. Like it's freaking great. Absolutely. It's that nostalgia mixed in with the moment of discovery again. Yeah, which a lot of other the Transformers movies were missing that moment of discovery. Yeah, it's not just it's not just this huge vomited pile of computer animated eye candy like everything else was <laughs> this month. <laughs> okay. Well, thank thank you so much for being on the show, John. Yeah, thanks and, for having me on, man. Will, will you say it or not say it? Say which one? <laughs> Because <laughs> now, now I've got multiple characters. Used to, I know what people were talking about, but now I'm like, okay, with Shockwave, Soundwave, or Optimus, like, what? Are we? Oh, <laughs> beeps. Oh, nah, I'd rather not say that. <laughs>
don't want to get me. I don't want to get any uh, any social political trouble over that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> John, it's been really fun watching your career blossom since uh, way before the Blastered Inc. day. So I just want to say I'm proud of you, buddy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Love, love honest trailers, man. I can tell. Live it all. <laughs> I can tell he really likes honest trailers. Thank you so much, John. Uh, uh, John, we'll uh, we'll see you uh, next time. Bye. All right. Sure, all right. Uh, go ahead, uh, Rick, and uh, add our next guest. Our next guest uh, probably needs no introduction. Uh, he is uh, a major part of the Transformers lore and fandom, uh, and a lot of people may recognize his uh, voice if you don't recognize his face, uh, but. He is Mr. David uh, David K, the voice of Beast Wars, Megatron, and many others. And do you want to show Optimus. other participants' video? Yes. yes. Yes, I do. There. There we go. There we go. Oh, wait. It's a little bright. It's a little bright. Let's bring that down a bit. There we go. It looks <laughs> fantastic. Better. There we go. So, welcome back to TFYLP. I, I had a chance to talk with you uh, a couple years ago at TF Expo in Kansas City. Or, or, yes, or, or, I, or, I loved sorry, it. Which, I which loved show. it there. Um, absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, wonderful meeting you. So, uh, how's it been going with you? Uh, today? Um, let's see. I'm uh, two Krispy Kreme donuts in, and I got two coffees. Uh, there's a big street festival out in front of our house today, uh, raising money for children's hospitals. It's getting bigger every year. It's been going like for 15 years. It's huge. There's only like a mini Ferris wheel. There's all kinds of stuff. So it's been great. Uh, great. Tell us morning. where you live. We'll come over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's in <laughs> 14th. <laughs> Oh, hey, I brought a button in the studio for you guys today. Side guns. Yes. That little button. Can you see it? Oh, my God. That is awesome. Do you pay yourself a royalty every time you hit that button? Yes, I do. Side guns. <laughs> Side guns. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so just uh, hanging out to getting ready for Christmas, and uh, I can feel my my body, my mind starting to shut off. Every it does every year. Uh, is is uh, uh, Talking Tunes podcast is coming up in the new year, and and Rob Pulse and I had a chance to talk, and I I, I got to say every year at this time, uh, the both of us we we all ag all agreed that we always say, well, we managed to pull the wool over their eyes for another year. <laughs> Think they know what I'm where I'm doing. And then the, the first week of January, it's like, wow, we got to do this all over again. So it's uh, thank you for all your support and everything else. It's been it's been a, a fun, another fun ride this year, and uh, who knows what's going to happen this year? Um, uh, fingers crossed. There's some cool new stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, how many years is Transformers now uh, since Beast Wars? Twenty five. How many years? Let's see here, 96. Uh, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96. Just trying to think of how many TV shows you've been uh, on for Transformers. Uh, Beast Wars, Beast Machines, Beast Armada, Armada animated. Animation, Cybertron, Animated, Prime. Prime and Robots in Disguise. Robots R.I.D. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think you might hold the record for <laughs> for the voice actor on the most Transformers shows. Wait, I, I won something? Really? <laughs> I don't win anything. Um, you yeah. won our hearts. Ah, uh, thank you. That's the most important thing. That's the only award that really matters. Absolutely. So thank you very much. Yeah. So, now you're you're living in America now. Is that correct? Is it, well, it's you've been, you're, you're been living here for, living here for a long time. Well, I'm 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 American. I'm an American citizen now. Uh, but uh, yes, that's uh, so. I guess I'm still dual. But no, I uh, when I went to Russia this year with my son, uh, we pulled out the American passports. So. <laughs> Are U.S. citizens? So, so what does the family countries. think of all of this? Of of this career? I don't honestly know. Um, the the cool thing is that they 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 came with me on the journey. I mean, I remember the the night back in the. God, I've been have, have had a relationship with this town for over twenty years. Uh, yeah, I remember the one night it was one. It was a New Year's Eve. We're we're heading out. Uh, I was still living up in uh, in Vancouver, and I said, "What do you think about uh, moving to L.A.?" Like ninety eight percent of the you know spouses, girlfriends would say, uh, "Nope, nope, you go. I'm not. I'm staying here." But she she said, "Yeah, sure." So um, 
uh, and my wife is, is awesome. And uh, the kids were young. My son was uh, fifth grade. He started down here. My daughter was a little more difficult. She she left. Uh, she's a freshman here. She left eighth grade, and then she was a freshman. And uh, the first year was 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 uh, tough for them, but uh, but I'm real proud of them. And um, yeah, you know, it's uh, part of the history and part of the career. And and I've always wanted to, you know, be down here and, and work with uh, my heroes. And it's been it's been an awesome move. An awesome is, move. Is there like a little Canada? in los angeles oh, where you can yeah, get the actually, team and there's a there's a big candidate here this this is the fourth largest canadian city in north america <laughs> wow. in population there's a million of us down here uh, honestly honestly in california so it's uh, it's kind of funny uh but uh but no i haven't been able to find any put- poutine but uh, there are uh, so many transplants here and people who have are friends of mine who, who've married canadians um y- you can get maple syrup down here uh, uh you can get from <laughs> You know, if I if I need it, if I need it, I'm, I'm you know it's fine. But um, no, it's it's uh, I just I I love it more than I thought I would down in Los Angeles. It's a, there's just a thousand different cultures and and tons of different types of food and you, yeah, whatever you want, it's 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 here. I, I imagine yeah. the weather plays a factor into that. Sure, but I'll tell you something. For for holidays coming up, uh, we're going north uh, to uh, to way up Vancouver Island on the west coast. I'm I'm getting out of out of here and shutting the phone off for like five six days, and it's going to be rain and surf and wind and it's forest. <laughs> it's fireplaces and blankets. Um, it is it is nice. Like today, it's like seventy two and sunny. It's beautiful a uh, beautiful day out there. But um, I, I like uh, I like the odd weather now and again. Uh, when it rains here, it's 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 quite nice. But so, so when we go for holidays, we we go where it's raining. <laughs> you go. Which, we don't get it here. Which virtually everywhere else, that's what it does. I mean, it's rained here for like three days straight. Seems like where? Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, it's uh, no, it's all, all been good and. Um, yeah, you know, tra- and, and it all started with Transformers. It all started with way you went back in '96. Where well, it was before that was '95. We were recording '94. We were we were recording in '94. Wow. And then it came out in '96, right? That's when it first mm-hmm. aired. Yeah. So was That's that crazy. whole era uh, really the start of your career? As far as uh, you can well, legitimately say, I, I can make a career out of uh, voice acting. Well, I, I, it was, it was, uh, I was in radio at the time and I didn't really know what I was doing. And, um, and I took a commercial modeling course. Uh, the modeling was a, was a kind of a joke. Uh, but the commercial part of it was learning lines and, you know, and being in front of a camera and doing stuff. And I kind of got a kick out of that. I was doing, I was doing a, a midday or a morning show, um, on a radio station and I had all day to, to do stuff. And so it became sort of, you know, out of boredom, I thought, well, what else can I do? And, and there was a friend of mine uh who uh was doing imaging on uh on a local radio station and and in the voice of the station like you know power one oh power 105 and it was stuff like that and and i said well how do you how do you do that so i i wanted to, i got into doing that first and and started to grow business doing that and then uh out of this commercial modeling course uh, an agent uh, he said do you know how to do voices and i said yeah you know sure yeah well, you know whatever so he sent me on my first audition. Uh, it was GI Joe for the Great American Hero. They were uh, recording up there, decanimation at the time, and I, I landed the part of General Hawk. And I had really had no idea what I was doing. And, um, and when I listened back to the performance, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> oh Lord! Uh, but that's where it started. There, the career started to build there. And then once you get your first taste of of a cartoon. You're like, okay, well, now I want to quit everything I've ever done and ever cared about and just do that because this is a lot of fun. If I could make make my living, try and make a living just having fun every day, that's that's pretty much the whole idea. Uh, that's what I really wanted to do. Um, so. Now, I want to open up the the floor to the other cast members that's on here. Uh, you have questions for Mr. K. Yeah, definitely. David, uh, met you at the last BotCon. It was, it was a pleasure running into you ah, there. Yes, I recognize you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I kind of flipped my lid recently when I was watching HBO or seeing on the on the cable schedule, mm-hmm. and I'm watching. I'm looking for the John Oliver show, and you have like top billing as <laughs> yeah. as the as the name under yeah. the under the episode. I'm like David yeah, K. 
That's and crazy. I, and I've come to realize, you know, you do all the all like the big voiceover stuff, all the funny, you know, sometimes they need that. And yeah, I just wondered the, the, how yeah. that how did you get involved with with that production? I, well, I was a manager had sent me something and it was for the promos for HBO. And, uh, you know, it was one of those sort of um, uh, throwback news announcer type voices. They wanted uh, uh, that uh, coming up this week on Last Week Tonight, the new show from John Oliver on HBO. I thought well, I did that, you know, and, and, and they hired me for promos for HBO for the show. I had no idea what it was. Just, uh, you, read, you, you know, read the thing that comes through and say, hey, man, you're doing that, that you finished on the, on the promos. Go, oh, great. So I'm watching HBO one night and uh, I see the promo start. I go, hey, my, Maria, come here. It's, it's the promo. It's a, I come in and, and uh, it wasn't my voice. And I kind of said, I went, oh. Oh, but he's really good, but it's not me. Well, what? And so I texted my agent, like, oh, I guess I'm not doing the show. And then uh, he called me. Um, it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, New York time. He's I don't think he ever sleeps. I think he's a vampire, my manager. <laughs> but he said, hey, it's Jay. Uh, he said, yeah, so they want to know if you want to work for the show. Like, can you, you know, can you work like Saturdays and Sundays? And I go, Whoa, Saturdays and Sundays, that's like sacred ground. Like, it's my weekend. I like to go away or just be, you know, away from a microphone. And uh, I said, well, you know, we'll see. We'll give it a shot. I, we had no idea. I had no idea what the show was, and it was starting out, and who knew? So first couple of sessions were on a Saturday morning in my pajamas in the studio, and they're in New York, and I'm in L.A., and, and you know, it was, it's a lot of fun. I did a few features and some of the and now stuff you hear and now newscasters arguing over the smallest little things you know <laughs> stuff like that um and uh it started to take take off and uh, it's a very clever show and and you know they, they have researchers that go deep and the edward snowden episode was fascinating and when he went to russia and i just so, and so they, they didn't take you to russia to meet him no 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 i went myself uh, i wanted to see for myself but i uh but uh, you know three and and Fast forward, they won their third Emmy um, here in L.A. Uh, you know, four four months ago or so, and 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 boy, those New Yorkers know how to party. Um, they they can go they can go long. So <laughs> but it was it's fun. It's amazing. You just the the point is, you just never know where things are gonna go. You, it was this little thing, and I backdoored in, and they wanted me for the show, and I went, ah, gee, I don't know. I almost said no, and um, uh, so don't ever say no. And here we are. So it was, I'm, it's been fun. Just so much yeah. fun. It, it was just really cool to find that personal connection I had to the show that I already, you know, thought was funny and nice. Yeah. And it, it took, I didn't. I didn't realize it was you for for a while. Maybe season two. Yeah. So. It's fun. To, it's fun to go. I've been there a few times and seen the show from backstage and in in the audience. And uh, it's uh, it's really great. I asked John. I said, "How does it feel? Like three Emmys? Like how did you ever think? He's I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't know." <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> and he's, he's he's like that in person. He's like he's un, he's sort of uncomfortable with the fame, but he's very British, you know, in that way. He's um, self-deprecating. It's it's wonderful. Um, and he made a really heartfelt little speech, and he made it almost made people cry. He goes, "No, stop it, stop it, don't cry, no, no, no." Uh, and it was just, yeah, it was just it's, being part of something special like that is is neat. Um, it's the closest I'll ever get to an Emmy. I got to hold the thing. Um, so I'm being, being part of that. It's pretty uh, pretty great. I'm, I'm, I call myself like a Swiss Army knife, like a jack of all trades, kind of all over the map in my career. A journeyman, you know. It's um, you never really know what's going to happen the next day, and I love that. You know, as far as cartoons, you just know, you never know. You you read stuff and you come up with a character. We're doing Trolls right now um, on, on Netflix, and I get a chance to play King Peppy and and. Um, it's one of the well, I've sang a couple of times, but that's the one of the, I, I finally have, I have songs, and so you just never know. I didn't know I was going to have a song, and I and they sent me a, a song one day, and I go, oh, do I am I singing this? And I go, yeah, he's King Peppy. I go, so I had to like, oh yeah, I, I got this. I'm I can sing. <clears throat> you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> no, did I say I could sing? <laughs> I remember, man, I remember doing an episode. What was on camera? What was the series called? Uh, Dead Man's Gun. Uh, Henry Winkler is a, was a producer on it, and uh, it was it was uh, filmed up there. And I worked with Michael, who is who? There is no sanctuary. There's what what was that old series? Michael, um, oh, for crying out, loud. Michael York was the main character. And and uh, when I went out for this, my agent says, "You, you know how to ride a horse, right?" I go, oh, "Yeah, <laughs> who doesn't know how to ride a horse?" <laughs> well, I ended up booking the gig, and I had to ride a horse the whole time. Oh no. 
So I had to literally go and take horse riding lessons uh, for a, a week every day for a solid week. And I managed to pull that off. So just be careful what you say yes to and make sure you can you can ride a horse before you say. <laughs> it's, it's not not advice I would give. But uh, I guess the whole point of this me rambling on is you never know what you're capable of until you try. And I think that's the, you know, my voice career in a nutshell. He says sometimes you get asked to do things and you'd. You, your automatic reaction is to say, well, I can't do that. And then um, Put, the Liam Neeson, sorry, go ahead. Push your comfort level. Uh, yeah, always, always pushing that. Somebody said to do Liam Neeson, go, oh, Liam Neeson, and they wanted me to sound like him. So I just started playing around, and you just they find out that you know, it comes from down in here. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. Oh, but oh, fine. You know, oh. so it's, it's a, you know, get off my plane. So I've, I've doubled his voice for a couple of times. It's just, just. Um, it, you find the placement, and, and if he's sort of in your, the person is in your wheelhouse, and you can kind of play around with it, and then it becomes just the acting beats. You just um, so it's 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 play and it's uh, improv, and it's just finding out what's you know the Megatron character. If people have heard this a billion times, but when I went into to audition for Megatron for Beast Wars those years ago, I really didn't you know have a whole lot of skill set because I, I was fairly new at it at the time. And I thought, well, what if you combine like Anthony Hopkins and Sean Connery and a lizard? Like, what would, what is that? And and I just came up with this. I was in the studio at the audition. I didn't really know what I was going to do. I thought, oh, everybody out here, all these people know what they're doing. I thought that they all know what they're they're going to do, and I, I I feel like an idiot. So I had nothing, and I walked in. And I said, well, here goes nothing. And I opened my mouth and, and then, you know, yes, and this sort of thing. You know, I started talking slowly and this and that. And I come up with, you know, yes, excellent. And, and they all the heads pop up in the studio like lemmings. They all like, you know, looking around. And you know that you got them. You get this a hook. You got them like that. And then they, they directed me a little bit. And then uh, we... A very Shakespearean with a bit of a thing. You know, it, so that's how that voice came about. It was more like... If I hope something comes out if I open my mouth. That was the biggest hope. And that's <laughs> that's my hope every day, and I've been doing it for 30-some-odd years, and it hasn't really changed. Uh, so did I answer your question in a long-winded uh, way? Absolutely. <laughs> I think you did. Um, Hank, do you have a question from Australia? Oh, or nice. Uh, so I guess um, it's interesting because I didn't know you did, like you acted because you were in you in a few movies, I was just looking up the Wikipedia page. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I lose in, use that term loosely, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. You in you in Battlestar Galactica too, and now that I, I look at the character's name, I actually remember um, the episodes you were in. Um, oh yeah, and it's it amazing. Your... I didn't know it was you. <laughs> it was in the. Uh, I always wanted my. To, to, I always wanted to have them put makeup on me because every time I get the makeup done, they do my hair like this old '90s hairstyle and look like a, you know, it was always like a news reporter hair. And I always wanted like to dress up as a Cylon or something cool. I never really got the opportunity to do that. Um, but the, the, that episode, hanging on set, to me, is it, doing on camera stuff uh, uh, when I did a lot of it up in Vancouver was. To me, it was a thrill, not so much to get hired to play the role. That was my least in, I was least interested in in playing the role I was I was I went out for. I loved just hanging out on set and and talking to people. And I would they would give me a you know a trailer and a and it would be kind of cool to you know hang out in the trailer. But I would be on they would be looking for me because I wasn't in a trailer. I was on set talking to the sound guys and the DOP and finding out how things work. I was more fascinated by all that stuff than my own you know. Um, so I, I would find myself every time I, I'd shoot a scene in anything, whether it be X Files or, or Galactic or any of those shows I did up there, Happy Gilmore. I was more. I don't think I was as prepared as I should have been because I really was there just to kind of go, "Wow, I'm on set." You know, I, I, <laughs> my my focus. There was some. There was some times where I was living on the edge, where I I knew my lines just enough, and somehow. They it it worked and and you know I, I don't know how I like 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 I said pulling the wool over their eyes. The 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 coolest gig on camera I had was the last thing I I, I had done there before I I sort of kind of quit on camera stuff because I just really, really wasn't enjoying it. Um, was with John and Joan Cusack on a movie, The Martian Child, 
and I played Joan Cusack's husband. And to be on set and work with the Cusacks and to be directed by a famous director. And and it was like, I said to the director, I said, look, if this is the last thing I do on camera, wow. And I, I had a ball because working with those people, you got to pay attention and listen. Because they're throwing little things in little lines and stuff. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I think if I'd have stayed with it, I think that would have been... Uh, a great learning moment is to is to really as an actor you got to pay attention and listen, and I I, I use that in, in in voiceover as well, um, you know to this to this day. But they taught me a very valuable lesson. If you're not prepared and you go on set and you're half winging it, and you're working with pros like that, uh, you're going to get buried. Um, so it was a great experience, and working with those two, and I learned a very valuable lesson about about listening on camera and and. Uh, so if I get a chance to do it again, I can come at it from a different place. But for the most part, my on-camera stuff, I was more interested in just, you know, being on set, I think. But the voiceover world is where that first cartoon, that G.I. Joe, those, that stuff, and all the commercials and things that I've done, I love that. I mean, I'm passionate about it. Um, and um, you can, like Rob Paulson said, we're so lucky to, to be given an opportunity to work on any show. It's just uh, it's mind-blowing. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Uh, what about you, Jim Black? Do you have any questions? Oh, well, I just, I, I honestly am glad you brought up Happy Gilmore because I had, uh, <laughs> I had forgotten about that <laughs> until you said that, and I'm like, yeah, that's right. Hey, shooter. You were one of the <laughs> yeah. reporters. Yeah, and you know, a cool, funny story about that is, uh, I was in on a, on a on regular show. They had me in on a bunch of times. Yeah. Played the big, the big baby. Let there be cake. Is there cake? How dare you? Um, <laughs> And uh, I love, well, it was so much fun being in the, first of all, being in the studio with Mark Hamill, because first of all, it's Mark Hamill, and he sits there, you know, you're looking at, it's Mark Hamill, I'm in the same room as, as Skywalker. Um, and it's always, this, in the regular show, is always the same thing, we do the, what are you guys doing, it'll blow up the universe. <laughs> and it was just, it was such a riot, and then one day I walk in, and there's Chris McDonald from Happy Gilmore, Shooter McGavin, right? Was it Shooter? Is that was it yeah. his name on that show? Yeah. And I said, hey, I said, you don't, you don't remember me. He said, I said, Happy Gilmore, and I was there, he goes, oh my God, that was you? Oh, God, wow, that's something, that's, that's a throwback, do I feel old? I said, you feel old? <laughs> <laughs> so I got a chance to work with Chris uh, in the studio on a cartoon many years after that. It, it was, um, and I was a nobody. I was just like a, I was in the way. I thought, <laughs> but it was, it was a ton of fun. A lot of laughter on set uh, in that movie. It was filmed out in Maple Ridge, British Columbia, at some golf course. I had no idea of where we were even, but that was a, that was a trip. I still get like a two dollar. Residual from that once in a while. Two dollar, <laughs> three dollar residual. Oh boy, I'm gonna go to the candy store. <laughs> Get some bubble gum. Uh, one last question, uh, Lucas. I'm gonna give you an opportunity real quick. Yeah. So um, I'm curious. Do you collect any of the the toys or oh, gosh, you know artwork yes. or anything yeah, me, uh, of of your characters? Johnson. And if so, what's your favorite? Or do you have any stories from that? Yeah, let me see here if I can uh, focus the camera on uh, some of the... Uh, it's in my studio here. I'm going to get some light on the subject. Let's see if this picks any of this up. Where am I? Oh, there I am. So there's the camera. Let me see. Uh, well, that's uh, up up there on the shelves. That's a lot of the uh, uh, toys up there. Um, there's there's Ratchet and Clank. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. From the movie. There's me right there. That's that's an awesome toy. Oh, it's heavy too. Uh, yeah, there's a. I, hang on a second. Let me put this camera over here. Hang on. I'll show you. I have something really special. You guys that no one else has, and I always wonder about this. We did a reading at uh, with. Uh, let's see. Was it the year that Weird Al Yankovic, and myself, we're at uh, Pasadena at BotCon in, in Pasadena. And we did a reading on stage, and I played Toxitron. Toxitron, oh. I think it was. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My friends oh, yes. is him. And this is a one-of-a-kind transformer that doesn't exist uh, only in most people's imagination. And I think uh, <laughs> Derek Wyatt for this, Derek gave me the... And he was sort of like the... Um, uh, 
one is it's my favorite transform by the way it's so cool um uh, he was like the um uh, optimus prime but he was like the what, what, what's the alter ego to superman you know that the everything's uh, backwards Bizarro? yeah bizarro, he's the bizarro. Yeah. he was like the bizarro superman and uh, he's like the bizarro optimus prime so that is just <laughs> my i love that toy so i got a, yeah i got a bunch of stuff up on, on the top shelves here I had to take my headphones off. I think I'll put it back. Yeah. It's kind of dusty because I don't bring them down a lot. No one's allowed to play with him except me. I have a question uh, for Dave. Yeah. Yes. Are you aware yeah. of the uh, really expensive Beast Wars Megatron toy coming out in the next few months? Uh, yeah, I kind of want to get one. Yeah. It's uh, is that the one from Japan? Yeah. The ma yeah. masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to. Uh, kind of want to get one. I think, um, uh, I think we should talk to Orson about just getting him sent one. Yeah, but. how do we? Because I will, I will, because I, I, you know, I will pay for. It. I don't. I, I'm very selective about the toys. I have like a boxes in and and of really cool, amazing stuff in the garage. I, I display some of the characters here, think, but that would. I think know. our uh, our uh, our uh, our podcast sponsor, Capture Prey, would be happy to help you with that. Yeah. Oh. So I can yes? I I can I can talk to the owner and uh, I'll if I'll get with you on, uh, via the uh, the email and and we, we we'll see if we can take care of that for you. Oh. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, you you got to oh, get one can, of those. You can buy these, by the way. Um, I think on the uh, do I have a? I do have a, I do have a site. <laughs> I'm horrible at social media. Oh my god! And yeah, my website. I think you can buy these now. Terrorized. There's a different sticker on this. This is also if you can't. You can't. That's, that's an illegal button. Um, but I have uh, the buttons you can buy. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that would be incredible because uh, that is one of the toys that I do want to have uh, going into 2019. That's my that's my toy goal this year. Is is, is that toy? So thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, 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 kind of plug anything that you're working on that you're al allowed to talk about right now. Sure. And then let you uh, have some holiday wishes for everyone. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, we're still going uh, in Trolls. Uh, King Peppy, he stays the father of the Trolls. You know, oh. no troll left behind. And I get to sing this year. Also, Grandpa Max and uh, Van Tower, we, we're still doing those shows. And, and that's a ton of fun. Uh, there is some awesome couple of video games coming out. Uh, I know that um, um, uh, 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 Ford Kruller, um, I don't know if you what was the game uh, that Ford was on? Uh, that is uh, that is making a comeback, um, and it's a big game. Uh, Jetta, you can still buy those video games, the DC, the, the DC Marvel the Capcom game. I played Jetta on that. What else is some new stuff happening? That uh, oh yes, oh, I can't talk about that. Oh, oh yes, the Avengers. I, I can I, I can say that I did uh, get a chance. One of the the, the highlights of 2018 by far was working with Stan Lee, uh, one of his last projects on um, Avengers, and um, it was I can't tell you too much other than the fact I can tell you that we work I work with Stan Lee, and it was the coolest thing ever to walk in. And um, and meet him and his font on his script was was that large and and uh, we were kind of after he'd left uh, we were kind of joking oh my god look at the size of the font and Mark Hamill says out of the blue he says we should all be so lucky to have font that big he was ninety and he's right he was in his early nineties at that time and uh, and I was so nervous and here I am like you know you know fifties and and he's Got fifty years on me for crying out loud, and and I'm I'm like a kid, and he says, "What do you do on the show?" And he goes, "Well, I play Baron Zemo. I play." And he goes, "Give me a little bit of Baron Zemo." And I go, "Well, it sort of sounds like this, and uh, you know, Avengers, I am the law." Blah blah blah. I did my thing, and he goes, "That's very good, very good. I like it. I like it." And I went, ah, "Stan Lee likes what I did." <laughs> uh, thank goodness. Uh, so that was a huge highlight, and and um, yeah, there's many other shows. I kind of forget. You have the IMDb. I, f I forget some of the stuff that I've I've, I've done. I'm I'm horrible at that. Um, but it's been a blast. 2018's been a, a a fun year for for me with cartoons, and there's more to come, and some stuff I can't say. So I hope that answered some of your questions. Uh, 
Absolutely. And uh, and uh, I would love to see if they would ever do a, do a Beast Wars movie. Um, I doubt that Michael Bay would ever even ring my phone, but boy, that'd be fun. Um, well, hopefully, well, Michael ring... Bay wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, they got they got to call him first. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. Uh, so uh, on that note, uh, th- guys, thanks for having me on today. Uh, it's a real pleasure, and uh, to all uh, everyone. In the uh, the Transformers universe, uh, I can't thank you enough for for, for being a fan, and because was you know obviously without you there's no no this is none of that, and so I can't thank you enough. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, and and have a uh, a blast in 2019. Absolutely, thank you so much, uh, David, and I hope you, you and yours a very happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Thanks, uh, man. Enjoy your your time away. I know it, it's well deserved. Yes, thank you. Hopefully, we'll see you in the new year. Absolutely. Right. Take care. See you guys. Take care. Thank Cheers. You, thank you. All right. All right. So I'm going to open up the uh, floor uh, for the rest of the cast that uh, that was on earlier. If you're able to and, uh, and willing, and are still uh, uh, available, you can join in and uh, and we will close out the show here. <clears throat> I absolutely love. David K, John, uh, Bobby Skullface, every one of them uh, have contributed to this fandom uh, in in huge ways. Uh, I, I can't state enough how how much an honor it is to have them on to be able to talk uh, to to you, the fans, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I, I know we've had fun opening gifts and sharing some memories, uh, and had these special guests on here. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts uh, for the close of the year? Lucas, uh, uh, since you're up here first. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, quickly share yes, my David K story uh, from TF Expo. Um, so I had a booth uh, that year, and uh, my wife was helping me work the booth. And so David comes up, and he's kind of wandering around and all that. And so she's talking to him, and she's like, well, what brings you here to TF Expo? And and David just kind of looks at her and he's like, "I'm I'm the uh, the voice guest for the show," so that that was a little that was a little awkward um, because I, I hadn't actually talked to her beforehand, um, um, you know, for all that. So um, anyway, so um, I, I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays. Um, you know, I you know this has been I think a, a, a great year for for Transformers and. I think again, just to echo Dron's sentiments and some, you know, from Jim and whatnot is, you know, just enjoy the time with your family, enjoy the t- time you got because you never know when things are going to change, um, and you, you know, it, it's never going to be the same next year, whether it's better or worse. So. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, who wants to go next, Paul? Uh, sure. I just, I guess, first off, I want to say great job on the holiday show, guys. Great guess. What a what a surprise. Michael Swift just messaged me and said to, uh, to wish everybody uh, happy holidays too, and uh, he wished he was there because of Megatron. <laughs> yeah. Michael who? <laughs> Michael who? Oh. Yes. Oh no. Uh, go ahead, Paul. Sorry. <laughs> That was pretty much it. I just wanted to say that like, it's been the podcast has been great. Absolutely, you, know, you guys, Rick and Duran, you guys did a really good job today. So, uh, Anna, if you, if, uh, I saw you post. Uh, you can join back in if you, if you like. Uh, and Sean, if you uh, if you want to as well. Uh, Jim, how about you? I just this has been a wonderful, wonderful year, a wonderful episode. Um, and that was David K. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it that was, was. That was cool. I yes, mean, just, just without meaning to, you know, just in regular conversation, you just, you forget you're talking to David K and you start hearing, you know, animated Optimus, you know, or, or, you know, just, just the different characters he's done and is it's just surreal. Well, you, know? you interviewed and, and, Skybot, and, and, so <laughs> you know most most voice actors you, you talk with. But. Well, one thing you got to remember too, they, uh, and and this is something that a lot of people 
uh, I've actually had somebody come up to me and said, Ron, you know, how, how do you get guests on the show? And it's like, ask. That's that's all it can do. Uh, I mean, what's the worst they can say is no. You know, uh, they're 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 regular people too. Just because, and sure. and and Bobby, I think, put it uh, uh, perfectly whenever he was on Bobby Skullface. Uh, he uh, he said that you know we're all we're all just people. You know, there's nothing that really makes us special. Uh, you know, yes th- that. They've they've actually worked on the brand, you know David K, uh, John Bailey. They they but in the end they're human beings too, you know and uh, and you know if they have time in their busy schedules to uh, to to join us then they can. If they can't they can't. Um, and, and and it's as simple as that. Some people are harder to get a hold of than others. Um, I will have to say that I did reach out to John Cena, uh, but I was unable to get him. Uh, so I was trying to get John Cena on the show as well. Uh, for so John Cena, if you're listening, yes, we'd we'd love to have you on. Absolutely. Um, uh, how, how, how do you know he's not on? You just can't see him. We wouldn't be able to see him. <laughs> what, what about <laughs> you? Got me there. <laughs> did you reach out to Hollywood It Girl Haley Steinfeld? No, no, I actually did not yet. Oh. I did Spider Gwen, and I, and I say yet. I do, I do have some information though, so oh, I, will, I will say well, that's ex- exciting. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, Hang, do you have any uh, closing thoughts? Um, I guess I'm sorry I'm, I can't be on the show more often. <laughs> um, I do watch the episodes because you guys do fa- fantastic work, and I really do enjoy the um, the toy reviews that's been happening. Um, great work with that, guys. Um, yeah, the spin-off's great. <laughs> Well, I, I, I do have a bit of, of some programming note. Uh, I got a message while uh, Mr. K was on, and it was from my new boss. Apparently, my work schedule is getting ready to change again, so uh, oh, no. heads up for that. I'm, I'm going to be working what's called C-Crew, which is uh, Friday and Saturday days, Sunday, Monday nights. So uh, the schedule TFYLP will probably change again. I'm sorry. Uh, but... <laughs> But I may be able to appear. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I want to try, try to keep it on Saturdays, though. But we'll 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 look at that. Uh, uh, but hang, I, I want to say that it's absolutely a pleasure having you back on. Uh, we've missed having you on. I understand that you know everybody's schedule is is different, and uh, some people have had to leave the show because of scheduling, and uh, and it, I hate it when that happens. But it's also understandable. You know, I don't twist anybody's arm to be on the show. If it, you know, people that are on this show or want to be on the show, uh, and it's it's a, it's a it's a labor of love. We don't make money off of this show. Uh, me personally, even if uh, even with the Patreon, I still lose money on this show. Uh, so uh, it's it's a labor of love because we love uh, service. Uh, servicing the fans with uh, great guests like Mr. K and John Bailey and uh, and Bobby Skullface and and uh, and toy reviews, um, you know, opinions, uh, and educate people on the Transformers brand. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to watch TFYLP now, uh, now that we've got better equipment, uh, it's only going to get better. Uh, 2019, I, I see this the sky and above uh, for TFYLP. As a brand and uh, and as a website, uh, Lucas, I want to give you a opportunity real quick. Oh, I, I think I went already. Oh, did you? Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I've got so much going on here. <laughs> All right, uh, Sean, Duran, you you mentioned the the Patreon. I, I don't recall you having plugged that earlier in the show. How how can people find the the Patreon? In? If you go to Patreon.com/slash/tfylp. Uh, if you love what we do each and every week, you can uh, uh, sign up to our Patreon, and whatever you can afford each month is uh, is is very very graciously accepted. Um, you know, it took over a year to get this machine paid for, uh, but look look at the quality. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, haven't had any technical issues so far. And that speaks volumes, you know, being able to prov- I have been striving for so long to provide the best quality podcast for everybody. Um, and I, I know that download issues, 
on iTunes is a problem right now. Still working on that. But you can still stream the audio, uh, and that's that's at least a plus. Uh, but uh, thank you, each and every one of you that continues to support us via our Patreon. Uh, and everybody that's uh, that's been thinking about it, please do. It helps us keep going. It helps us better ourselves. Um, so, Sean, I'll, I'll open up the door uh, for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I appreciate you guys bringing me on this year. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, I just hope to see everybody again in 2019, and hope everybody's doing well. Right, awesome, uh, Christian. Uh, very similar to what I wanted to say. Uh, we're almost up to my anniversary of being on the show. I started in January, so I've, I've had the full year to be on board, and I really love doing it. Uh, really like being involved with the community more. Thanks for coming out and saying hi to me at shows. If you are listening and you came and saw me and said, hey, or said what's up or anything, that, that meant a lot to me. So have a happy holidays, and we'll see you next year. Um, all right. Who has not went? Paul. I, I, I went. Oh, did you? Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I'm, did, I'm just... did Anna go? Anna has yeah, not. Anna. Okay. Uh, Anna. Um, well, I guess um, a lot of it is I will just say the same thing, that I'm really glad you all added me to the show. I started, you know, this year as just a goofy academic who wanted to talk about Transformers at a convention, and um, now I get to be on a podcast, and I don't always have to talk about psychology, although half the time I end up doing it anyway, but oops. Um, it's your job. So I really appreciate Right, right, right. And it gets to be my hobby, too. Um, I really appreciate that, and I want to say that, like, I was gritting like a goofball the entire time that David Kay was on here. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad I wasn't on camera, because it would have been slightly embarrassing. So yeah, I just want to say this has been really fun, and I'm glad to be here, and I hope to stick around for um, a little while, and be here for the next holiday show. So thanks, Absolutely. everyone, and happy holidays. Awesome. Uh, who has not went? That's 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 probably be, uh, be the best way to do it. Peter, have you went? I don't. I don't think I've gone. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, just basically echo echoing the sentiment that everyone already uh, said. Um, super grateful to the podcast, to you, Duran, and to everyone on the the cast for taking a chance on me and just you know getting me out there. I really appreciate it. This is my my Transformers outlet every week. Uh, where I get to talk with everyone and, and, and visit, and it's just, it's been a really wonderful experience, and I, I'm grateful to all of you for all of that. Um, and to everyone listening, I just want to wish you all a happy holiday, safe holiday, and we'll see you all next year. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Rick, I know you haven't went yet, because you've been having some audio-video issues. <laughs> yes, the mailman came. I had to go uh, take care of something. My uh, $20 Millennium Falcon got here. <laughs> I had to treat myself that uh, Millennium Falcon from Solo Movie. It's a hundred bucks when it came out. Twenty dollars shipped on Amazon. Wow. Treat yourself. I treated myself. Uh, well, I think it's what my third year on TFLP. I believe so. This is my third holiday episode, but my first one actually being on the episode. Uh, I can't believe I've lasted this long. Can't believe this show's still on the air. <laughs> uh, can't believe Duran's still alive. Uh, well, you almost didn't have me after June, you know. So <laughs> I know. Better luck next year. Yeah. So, um, I love being Sorry. on the show. I, I love being able to talk Transformers to other people, and then just hitting a button and they go away. I really enjoy that experience. <laughs> I, I really enjoy being able to say what I want to say and then shutting off the world. So thank you. <laughs> it's a good outlet to, to, to just vent about toys. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you need, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank everybody that's joined us via the live chats, uh, Antoine, uh, Carrie, uh, everybody. Uh, I mean, they some great gifts. I, you know, thanks so much again, Jim. Uh, I've, Yep, you know now now I got to track down Optimus, but uh, <laughs> it's it's just amazing, absolutely amazing. I, uh, I fully expect a Yellow Wolf gallery. <laughs> Whenever I get a chance to break out the light box again, it's it's few and far between anymore lately. 
but you know, a, a little bit of a programming note. Uh, if you didn't catch it earlier in the episode and in the uh, in the uh, in the excerpts, um, this is our last live broadcast of 2018. Uh, we won't be back until after the new year. Uh, so keep following us on our Twitter at tfylp, uh, the tftalk.net Facebook page, or just tftalk.net. Uh, you can find all the latest information about TFYLP, uh, a lot of great news. Uh, we're trying to keep up with the news and uh, uh, share uh, lots of info uh, for the fandom uh, and be kind of a hub for, for a lot of things for you guys. Uh, we love each and every one of our fans, and uh, remember, this holiday season, it's not about toys. We love these toys so much, but... Uh, love your family. Uh, if you have uh, family still around, uh, you know your friends. Lean on them. Uh, I know uh, there are times whenever I'm 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 really down, and uh, uh, hanging out with you guys once a week, uh, and or sometimes more <laughs> if we can, and and my local friends. It's it's so much and so so uplifting to, uh, to be able to uh, to spend time with you guys. And this time of year, I, I know we we. We probably should do this and think about this year round, but this time of year is a really a good time to reflect upon uh, the friendships and the camaraderie that we share. Um, and from from me as a TFYLP host, I, I, I want to thank each and every one of you that contribute each and every day and every week uh, to this show. Um, you know, it's it's something that that I started. Uh, you know, almost 10 years ago, never thought it would ever get anywhere this to, to where it is today. And I think, like I said earlier, I think it can go even farther. Um, you know, I, I have dreams and aspirations for this. Um, and, you know, who knows for, uh, what the next next step will be for, uh, for TFYLP. Um, but, you know, for, for myself... And, and everybody here on TFYLP, I want to thank everybody for joining us this week. And I hope you all have a happy and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and New Year. Uh, we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Take care, guys. Happy Diwali.